All right, welcome to Vasebe Cast number 169 with No Monkey. No Monkey, how are we doing this afternoon? GM, GM. <laughs> how always, are we doing, lads? I, I'm, I'm doing amazing. It's uh, always a pleasure talking to you. So uh, a, lot of, <laughs> a lot of juicy topics to cover, I, I'd imagine. So, Oh, yeah, for sure. So first things first, you, correct me if I'm wrong, you hold the world record Coliseum, correct? Well, I didn't log in to caress the board today, but I think so. Yeah. <laughs> Just like right now, like this minute, somebody just beat it. No, imagine. Um, yeah, yeah, I don't think so. Uh, okay, so I don't know if you heard, but I had Mulgoat, Kirby, and Addicon on, and this is again, this is like a week maybe after the release of Coliseum, and so we were talking, and they were very uh, Addicon especially. What? And again, this is a weekend, but I I asked the question. I said, in six months, what do you think the world record Coliseum time will be? And they were very, Adicon especially, was very weary of just like even going beyond sub-17 at that time. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, I mean, even he's like sub-17 already. I think he's like a 1639 or something like that, if I saw yeah. correctly. So what, what do you, let me just ask you this question. In six months from now, with the changes that are going to be coming, I'm imagining this is probably going to be the only set of changes coming this Wednesday. What do you think will be the world record Coliseum in six months from now? Um, so I think right now sub 16 is possible, even without changes. Uh, it'd be really, really rare and hard, but I, it's definitely possible. Um, the changes are going to make it so you don't have bad invos again, I don't think. Or you're never forced to take something terrible or like end a run over invocations. Mm. Um, so that just means you complete more runs an hour, so more chances at wreck. Uh, I don't know. I don't know if sub 15 is possible. I, I've been saying like sub 1530 is probably doable, like in the long run, but I don't know. Yeah, because th this is at least what's floating through my mind. It like, okay, when the Inferno speedruns were going on initially, and I wasn't even like into that community at all, but I remember people saying sub 44 would be insane. Now, of course, we've had gear upgrades and everything else. Yeah. But uh, the thing is, th that time is way longer too, right? So taking time off something that's 16 minutes is way crazier than a 45 minute run or whatever, you know, it's true. Okay. Well, here, let me ask you this. Are you like, is there, I'm not in the speed running Coliseum either, like in that scene at all. So I'm just taking, I'm just like a noob, like just uh -huh. trying to see it from the outside. It, are you going to eventually be bringing like thralls and vengeance? Oh, that's what I was doing. Uh, I didn't do it in the rack, but that's what I started doing after to try okay. to beat it. So vengeance is basically like essential. If you really want to squeeze every single tick possible to, to get yeah so records. here's the here's the thing right you in the speed run you go for a wave two and four skip so the reinforcements come at 40 seconds if you kill the entire wave before 40 seconds they do not spawn so the it has happened before where someone has skipped on wave three and i think it's happened before where someone skipped wave seven which is the one with the minotaur which has a ton of health it's super rare because like you have to kill everything before he spawns yeah so if there's some like, I don't, I don't know. It's like getting a no anvil at Tecton or something. Just like the absurd, like if your scythe just hits eighty every swing, then it's possible to save yeah. like thirty <laughs> seconds. So I guess somebody could get like the crazy god run, but yeah. well, I don't know. I feel like the crazy god run is actually even more possible too because it's a shorter fight, like all together. Yeah, yeah, and also with invo changes, you know, the more runs people complete, the more chance of that. So. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Oh my gosh, like I'm just so excited about it because first off, I watched your full run, the 1610, and I was like, this is just exciting. Like this whole thing is, oh, <laughs> well, I wanted to ask you this because they are making a ranger change or maybe they already made it. I can't remember. Is, is the ranger... With the little like, archer? Yeah, no, yeah, they already yeah, did the that. Okay, he maxes 14 now. So are you able to keep him around? I know I saw you doing that strat or is that just not in the, in the so cards anymore? I kind of do. I'm doing, I've been doing money runs. I haven't even been running for wreck because... Mm -hmm. Like this week, that archer change makes it so much slower. You're taking more damage. You have to spend more more SGS specs instead of claws. Um, like it's probably still possible to get to beat wreck, but I'm I'm like, why bother? Like the new changes are coming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's brutal. But um, you can kind of keep like you're playing range most of the time in Coliseum. Like almost everything is ranged. So a lot of times you can just keep them up for like a good amount of time. But he definitely hurts. It's a guaranteed hit too. It's it's just rolling between zero and fourteen every hit. So. Ah, it adds up. 
So what are the other, cha so the added Manti Mayhem, that sounds like the most easy free thing of all time. <laughs> Doom Doom 1 is also extremely free. I mean, Doom 1 you can take on yeah, Wave 2. Yeah, Doom 1 should be free. I think, totally I, th chilling. I went and counted my boss. I actually did take enough hits that I would have died to Doom. So maybe on a first cape, like, I don't know. I feel like even on a first cape, if you've watched a guide or two, like you shouldn't be taking more than 15 hits ever, but... Yeah, I think the max I've ever hit, or so I've completed nine bosses, and I think I own, and I even took Doom for like three or four of those runs, and I think the max I ever took was like 13 hits. So like Doom 1 yeah. seems super, super free. I think Doom 2 for people who know what they're doing should be fine as well. Doom yeah. 3 is a little, a little. Eh. Yeah, do, <laughs> do, a, Doom 3 is for the advanced people. and Maybe uh, in a speed you know. run or something where you're like just risking it, but I don't know. Okay, did you see Kiwi? Um, I can't remember the last part of his name, but he got a no damage run. Like, he didn't take any damage. I heard of it, but I haven't seen it. Okay, that was crazy. So he does, obviously, this isn't speed run, but it was max, it, not maximum glory. It was the highest glory we've seen. Okay. And apparently, like, that is the best way to get the highest amount of glory. Like, if as soon as you take one damage, you lose that full bonus, apparently. It doesn't, like, scale or anything. Oh, it's like a chunk bonus. Okay. Yeah. That makes yeah, sense. Yeah. So he was saying, like, wave 11, if you even take one hit, it's like, boom, there's 1,100 points gone. Um, wow. So do you think that people even care about glory? Because I feel like, ultimately, the community, is, including myself, I just I just care about what the fastest time is. Glory for me has been kind of a joke since before it even came out. Like they were saying, like, I don't, speaking of which, when did where did endless mode go? But they were saying with I endless know. mode, like it it I won't know. give you rewards, it will give you glory. I'm like, oh boy, glory! I love glory. <laughs> <laughs> huh? I, I'm more interested in getting better loot, but bro, I was trying to make a compilation of like past save casts where I'm talking about the Coliseum, and every single one I'm talking about endless mode. Like I'm just like, it's gonna be so <laughs> exciting when there's endless. And I'm like, dude, none of these clips make any coherent sense if I were to put it up now. It just it sounds like I'm just completely delusional at the what, at yeah, the, what, the con the, what this content is. So, Wait, do you think that's coming out for Varlamore Part Two? Or is there, there's just no two. way. I'm I'm amazed they haven't mentioned it because everybody's like, where is it? I I don't know. They said it would come out. I'm just confused. Like, how would they even implement it at this point? It feels like the Coliseum that we got is literally just Blue Inferno and nothing else that they ever said. Like, I, I, I swear to God, they said Endless Mode at some point in some blogs. Oh, multiple blogs. 100% yeah. they did. <laughs> I, I don't know how it would even look with the invos. I, it would be... I don't know. You'd just be forced to take, like, the really bad ones the second run. It, it would still be fine, though. It would be, like, doable if you're really good. It literally makes no sense. The other, di uh, this is my disappointment, but this was also my own mistake. I thought the quiver was going to offer that entire range bonus to all weapons, including blowpipe, but it was just for the ammo. Yeah. So originally it was going to, and then okay. they realized, oh, that gives blowpipe a max. That's a little, a little much. <laughs> I so wanted they, that so they bad. Scaled it back. <laughs> I wanted it. Yeah. Um, okay. So have you done any inferno since uh, the quiver came out? I did. I saw Zuck yesterday. It was crazy. I never see Zuck. <laughs> yeah, Zuck. Yeah. No, when you're doing like the actual speed runs for Inferno, it does seem like it's rare to get to the end at this point. I die so much more yeah. than most people even. <laughs> yeah. I saw Scotty get a sub 41 finally. So uh, I didn't exciting. watch that run, but I heard it's freaking crazy. Yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah. I mean, but the runs nowadays with Inferno, it's like you have to chance yourself. I mean, that is just the speed run tech now. Yeah, it feels for sure. Is that just inevitable with all speedruns? Because I'm imagining Coliseum in six months from now, when there's literal Giga Chads that have solved this whole thing. I just feel like at some point you're going to need a chance yourself because you're going to be like you know 60 HP or whatever, and you're going to need a chance avenge or something just to get that extra little bit. And there's been times where I'm like, the only way I get the skip is avenge. I'll just try it. Yep. Yeah. Definitely, that's the thing. Interesting. So what are your just like overall thoughts on the Coliseum? I guess I haven't really heard anything. I, I mean, obviously, people have been watching you on kick and Twitch and YouTube. You are, uh, by the way, I just got to say this, you're killing it with uh, the whole like spreading yourself across platforms. I see you everywhere now. <laughs> <laughs> so, I appreciate it. Yeah. So uh, what, what what are your just like overall thoughts on Coliseum? Are you pleased with it? What are like the biggest good that they what's the biggest good that they did? And what's like the weak points? I so it is really good. I'd say it's in the top five, like, piece of content in the game, for sure. Um, 
it's it's not as good as Inferno, I wouldn't say. I'd say Inferno is still the best piece of content in the game. The the thing keeping it back is the like random invocations right now. And maybe the change uh to the invocations makes it better. The the issue is like when you lose a run to just like Doom Doom Scorpion Relentless or something yeah. and you're just like okay. That's that's pretty annoying. Nowhere there's no part in Inferno where you're like, "Wow, that was not feasible." Like what I just got handed was impossible. Mm -hmm. It's always possible. But in Colosseum maybe not necessarily. So with the with the changes, they're making it so like I I determined one was a run under still. I can't even remember what it was. It was like reentry and red flag are really bad, I think. But they've they've fixed like all the other invocations. Relentless is a thing you can take. Doom Scorpion is gone, and it's a thing you always take because it's Manti Mayhem. Uh, Doom is a thing you can take. So it's just like all those bad choices are gone. Might fix it. I don't know. Yeah, I definitely feel like there's not going to be run enders like you said. That I think that's important. You'll never um, get handed three that you're like, wow, okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to, to be fair, I don't ever think there was necessarily a run ender, but like obviously you can complete the Coliseum if you're good enough. But yeah, when you're like wave five, like it, I remember getting bees, totemic, and doom scorpion. Yeah, if wave like two you get doom, doom scorpion, <laughs> relentless, it's kind of like being told, well, you're doing Just a leave. pillarless inferno today. <laughs> yeah, and it's literally. like, yeah, I could do that. <laughs> I, I was surprised that they didn't have some sort of invocation for like remove a pillar out of the place. Yeah, true. That was kind of interesting. Like it, it's just actually, moving pillars. Yeah. No. Okay, so what? So what was up with that? I think. I. I. Think, yeah, that was a thing too. Yeah, they were gonna <laughs> have those like little guys with the shields everywhere, like moving around. Surely, like when they were play testing out, they're like, "This is just actually a shit show." Like I could totally imagine that. Maybe it's just annoying, or yeah, I don't know. I could see it. Yeah, it just doesn't work. It does feel. I was actually somewhat surprised when I was doing my first runs on how little they really explored um the coliseum mechanics i just feel like yeah there's some unique things but nothing was like super crazy i feel like i was I, th I thought for some reason that there was going to be some like really really difficult shit going on during the waves but no it just feels yeah i thought it would i thought it might get a bit more complicated with some of the mobs but yeah yeah because it's weird because like when i was doing my first runs it's like you get to wave eight or nine or ten and you're like wait, like what? I have like one more wave after this? Like this feels like too short or something. Like where, where, where's like the hard stuff? It feels like at least, at least it's kind of what it felt like to me. I, I guess we're so like used to Inferno just being so long. Yeah, it's just so fast. I mean, yeah, I guess that's kind of just how it is. So what do you think are like the weakest points? Is it, was it just like the invocations and now they're kind of fixing that? Or is there any other thing that like still I think, persists? I think the content at a core, like you take invocations out, I think it's really solid. Um, the solves are interesting. I, I kind of like the little delay at the beginning before you get hit. Because like in Inferno, there's no avoiding like yeah. off spawns at the beginning. Yeah. I, I like that there's a little bit of counterplay. Sometimes I do a, I, I'm trying not to lose ticks in the speed run. So I'm, I'm not doing, you can do the thing where you run behind the pillar tick perfect and you don't take any damage. Mm -hmm. I don't do that in a speed run though because I need to spend those ticks. So sometimes you can like cast the berserker and I have a radius marker on the shockwave. So you can see like they're like almost out of range. So you can like run out of range like after you cast and then come back in and like off tick things. There's some cool stuff you can do. I like that a lot. It's, I'm just, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm very impressed, honestly. And I think uh, the, I want to talk to you about the final boss because that was one thing we addressed. And I thought that was honestly one of the most unique and enjoyable fights that I've ever had. I like the boss. I like It's just so fun, dude. They nailed it. <laughs> like it's act. It literally feels like dark, like Dark Souls. Like it's I'm It is. It's impressed. just like that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I was talking to Mulgoat and Addy, and I was like, man, like having an open world kind of soul fight that you can just kill repeatedly without going through waves would be so addicting. Even something <laughs> more challenging because of I like think, the lack of waves. I think Soul is like perfect for the end of Coliseum because he has so many. Th it's just like Zuck, where it's like he has so many. Like, Zuck isn't very hard either. Yeah. But he has so many things that you don't encounter anywhere else in the game with the, like, armor takeoff and then the, like, the, the timing, the protect prayers. That's just, like, not a thing you have to deal with. So the fact it's at the end of, like, a long, like, thing means, like, getting there, you're going to die. Like, no matter what, you're going to die. You have mm -hmm. to learn it. So that's, like, perfect. Zuck is the same way. It's, like, it's very simple what you have to do. But what other boss do you have to, like, tag healers and follow a shield and all that, you know? Yep, yep, like. Yep. And the You'll pressure. die to that too. Yeah, the pressure soul, as well. Like, there, no matter what, you will die your first soul fight. Like you just will. You will. <laughs> it's yeah. just impossible to get through it initially. There's too much <laughs> going on. Um, 
Uh, okay, so let's. I want to hear your thoughts on the rewards because obviously the quiver is amazing. But what are your thoughts on the little throwing thing? I still don't know what that got. Toes, toes. I just call it the glaive. The, yeah, the tunnels ticks of Rylos. Yeah, 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 that. Yeah. So the glaive. So have you messed with the glaive? And I also want to obviously touch on the sunfire, that shitty armor, and uh, the uh, <laughs> the um, echo boots. So the the rewards suck. All of them suck. Yeah, uh, <laughs> not, not great. Huh? What what are the prices the, by the way? Because I remember the echo boots. It looked like they were like forty mil. Is that have it just plummeted at this point? Or oh what? no, they're. They're the 15, I think I sold yesterday. The The Glaive is up a little bit because they said they buff it, but it's going right back down because it's not very good still. So. Yeah. What, what exactly did they propose to change with the Glaive? Okay, so the Glaive, the way it works is it is two hit splats, and it drains 10% of the target's defense um, of their mage level. So let's say they have 200 mage. Um, if you hit them with a Glaive hit splat, it's draining 20 defense. And it's got two, so it could do it two times. So it's up to 20% defense drained of their mage level. So the idea is like high mage level means you you drain a like chunk of their defense. Okay, interesting. And so, is there any spot that you've seen that this is going to be worth it? Like anywhere? There, There is. It's good at Maiden. Uh, you fully drain her with it. Like you don't even use Hammer or BGS anymore. It's best oh. to use Glaive. Oh, wow. Okay. Um. And I was looking at some of the other uses. I think Hydra, I didn't calc it versus a ZCB, but I think Hydra, it's pretty good, like for one spec. And then um, Chambers in like big teams, it's pretty good. On Ice Demon, I think it drains like 100 defense or something. That's pretty solid. Uh, Ulm Head, it's okay. It does actually drain Ulm Head. And then um, like Mega Scales, like they drain everything. So I guess it's like best for draining things in general for that, but... Okay. I checked it even on Tecton. I was like, oh, he's immune to ranged. But, you know, sometimes hammer works. Even if they're immune, it doesn't work. Very sad. <laughs> so, like, what would, would, are you okay with where it sits right now? Or do, would you want it to be buffed? I think it needs to be buffed a little bit. Uh, how would you do it? So, right, right now, I think it's roughly like 250 mage is when it's, the problem is hammer's so good. Um, hammer drains 30%. So, it's like, if their defense is 200, it's draining a massive chunk. Like, to beat that, they need like 300 mage. So it's like, uh, can we can we just make the thing better than hammer? Like where where hammer's coming from? Shamans like a, a Slayer mob. Can is this allowed <laughs> to just be better? Maybe. Yeah, that's my thought. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> Dude, that's my thoughts on Echo Boots. I feel I feel like Echo Boots oh, like no. had so much. Like I understand that the communities. The community is terrified. Well, part of the community is terrified of like any sort of thing. It's going to be better DPS than like what we've currently had for years and years like prim like if, you, if you're outclassing prims like what are you doing like what like huh but i just feel like i don't know it's the it's the coliseum like can we just like can echo boots be good like i understand it's weird to just have like passive damage coming from boots sort of as an aoe but like i don't know i just want it to be good and it's a chargeable thing so it makes sense imagine if it was the shield that they went with how useless would that be? It's that, already useless. That was the stupid. <laughs> I, w I was actually getting like bothered. I was genuinely getting bothered that they were like, <laughs> like, bro, okay, who has literally ever used one of those shields? Like, honestly, one of those three shields. Like, nobody. Unbelievable. <laughs> like, nobody <laughs> uses that. Oh my God. Yeah, that was, that was horrible. I'm so glad that the community just stuck with the boots. Like, Jesus Christ. That was. But the Echo boots don't even feel that good. It feels like a waste. They, they're making some changes on Wednesday, but like. The changes aren't doing anything. It's just more charges. Yeah. Like, is there any place where this is actually decent? I, I think Vard okay. Orvis, they said, is like the only place. I haven't calc Vard, and it actually loses a Soul Reaper Axe max, so I'm not sure. I think it might be worse still. Oh, my God. That's hard. I'll, I'll, I'll break down how it works really quick. Okay. So the boots, the boots are Guardian boots with extra prayer bonus, right? So they lose two strength and all the accuracy of Prims. Prims actually have two stab slash crush, so a tiny bit of accuracy. Mm-hmm. Um, they recoil for one damage per hits plat taken per four ticks. So if you take damage, it will recoil one damage in a three by three area around you, and then it goes on a four tick cooldown. So also if you get hit multiple times in that tick, it can, it can hit multiple things I found out. So that's cool. So basically... <laughs> Huh? You are you're running. Do you lose a max hit first of all? If you lose a max hit, it's by default not better. Okay, 
I'm in this weird setup where I don't lose a max hit. Maybe I'm running a torture in max melee. Okay. Is it better than that two, like, slash bonus you're losing? So I actually was thinking, like, oh, you know what, Tob? Maybe. Because you don't lose the max hit in, like, max F speeds. Everybody's running torture. Okay. Maybe, just maybe, that slight recoil is better than the two slash. And I'm like, I don't I, I said this on stream. I'm like, I guess we leave it up to one of the Tob gods, I guess, because they'll have to calc it all out. And Flash is in my chat, and he goes... No smiley face, but they look cool. <laughs> <laughs> God damn it. And if also, you don't know Flash, he's in like the top five. He, he knows what he's doing. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah. yeah, yeah. I, had, <laughs> I had him uh, on, in okay. January. He's a total God gamer. So uh, if he's saying that, yeah, that's not good. Not a good nah. sign. So like, well, what are we supposed to do with the Echo Boots? I feel like, I mean, obviously we could just buff the damage recoil, but that feels a little odd. But also I'm down. But like, what, what would you say? Why do they have a cooldown? That's I, true. When it was when it was pulled, no one was like, "Oh, they'll recoil one damage." Nobody voted yes to that, thinking they'll recoil one damage. This was a this was a, just a Jagex decision here. <laughs> okay, so what it really should do is it should recoil the same amount as a recoil does, which is like ten percent, right? Sure. Yeah, something like that. That actually makes sense. Plus, you're taking. I mean, you're literally taking that damage. It makes sense to be able to recoil that amount. It's not like it's you just have like unlimited HP to give. So the, the, I'm trying to think where it would be like OP. Nowhere. It, it's a tiny bit of recoil. It's good with Fang because you don't lose a max hit. And it's good with Scythe with torture, like with full max melee. Because mm -hmm. then you don't lose the max hit. But even then, in a lot of cases, like if you're salted with Fang, now you lose a max. If you're overloaded with Scythe, I think you lose the max. So like, I don't know. Do, do they really become good anywhere still? Eh... They're good at Vardorvis, right? They're good yeah. at places you take chips. So Vardorvis, Duke, um, probably Zalra, just to like, I don't know. And so That's probably okay. And so these are, it, this actually counts as recoil damage. Was it you I asked that about the Nex, like using it at Nex, is it just doesn't yeah, work? Yeah, it doesn't work at Nex. No. Yeah, it counts as recoil. <laughs> Why the hell does Nex not recoil? Like, what is wrong? <laughs> what is that? Seriously. Oh my God. So stupid. I don't get that. I don't get that. Okay, so they're pretty much useless right now. Like, maybe if they made it so the recoil is actually a full recoil, which is like oh, 10%. their one use. Their okay. one use is, like, first Inferno run. Because they're, like, almost devout boots prayer. And then they have a lot of defense. So okay. if it's first Inferno run, they're okay. So there you go. <laughs> okay, so they're like, they're, like, tank devout boots, basically, which is kind of nice. Yeah. Okay. Sure. That's fair. So, but for max efficiency, you're not really going to be bringing them many places. No, it's not BIS anywhere in the whole yeah. game, I don't think. Okay. No. Interesting. Now, the Sunfire Fanatic, I was really, really hoping that the community would, you know, come together and vote on a prayer range armor because we don't have that yet. And of course, no, that for you, you're never going to use anything like that. But I was thinking, you know, <laughs> for an AFK, for like ranging something AFK, having something that's like slightly better than Black Dehyde or something that has a ton of prayer bonus like that would be fucking awesome like you know, you know you do you do cannon with venator bow a lot if, if it was like maybe just like armadil like that would be okay maybe like yeah prayer, bonus, prayer armadil like sure oh that would be amazing and it comes it. from the coliseum i don't know why we have this like illusion like this shit needs to be super crappy like this is coming from the coliseum i don't know <laughs> i don't feels, know man feels weird a lot of the rewards feel worse than perilous moons like genuinely <laughs> But like I new know. Barrels brothers have better drops, like a lot of times. <laughs> I know it's it's. Oh wait, so have you done any moons? By the way, I haven't. I haven't touched it. Okay. I've seen a little bit of it, but it's all right. It's uh, definitely mid game. I'll say that, but uh, it's. I know. some of the mechanics looked okay. I saw you like flinching stuff with the ice and stuff. They look kind of cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's pretty cool. And there's way like if you have max, like you are just coasting through it. It's pretty cool. Okay. So that, that, there's one thing, and it has great like replayability. You're just in and out. It's not like Barrows. I mean, with Barrows, it's even more OP at this point. But back in the day, it was like go back to your fairy ring through like Ardoin and right. run back through the swamp and stuff. Yeah, it's not like that. So. Okay, okay. Um, okay, so, yeah, the Coliseum doesn't really offer much, um, except for the Quiver. The Quiver's amazing. What, what would, if you could only choose one, what would you choose? The Quiver or the Infernal Cape? Like, what's the better uh, option? I've been, I've been saying I think the Infernal Cape's still better, but, yeah, just because strength bonus matters probably more. Okay. But, they're, they're, it's pretty dang strong. I don't yeah. know. It's close. Because I, I was going to say, I would probably actually take a Quiver and... A fire cave just overall i think like if like it, if it if was it, 
if it was up to if that. If it gave Pipe a max hit, I think I would say Quiver, but... Oh, yeah, that's true. I still haven't been able to use my Quiver. I gotta get my 150 case flinchers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. It's Gross. fine, though. At I'm... least you can get completions for it now. Yes, thank goodness. And they're, like, upping the splinter um, amounts, yeah. so that'll be nice. Did you see the Sir Pugger video, like, on week of release? Basically, this AI is just solving... Oh, that was crazy. Yeah, I did yeah. see that. I, I, that I'm, was actually really cool. <laughs> it is. It's 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 terrifying, though. Like, this, it the, is. We, are, we yeah. are living in this age, but it is fascinating. And I wonder, like, even if it wasn't used to bot or anything, like, malicious, if it was just used to absolutely teach us, like, all the proper solves and everything... I... I would love to see that thing thrown at Inferno on like a private server on like on task and just see like how fast the thing. Get. There's so many weird little time saves in Inferno that you can do that only like a bot could do. Like you can break blocking on like targets like tiles, which you can't really do mid run, but you could like break blocking, stack targets, start vendoring. Like there, there's so many things you could do that only the bot could do. I'd it, love to see that. It would literally be, be like red. watching AI chess. Yeah, literally. Yeah. Wait, so. But uh, but here's the thing: Could you code the AI to go as fast as humanly possible? Like to that to have like to program it in to be like, okay, so not only do you have to solve this without dying, you need to do it as fast as you possibly can. Like with, surely with learning, right? You just reward it for doing faster waves, right? Surely that'd be so sick to watch. That would be amazing. <laughs> oh, I man, wonder. Really I wonder cool. like. If it did a flaw, let's just say, you know, it did a, a flawless run. Of course, there will be multiple flawless runs, but I just yeah. wonder what its average time would be. Like, let's just say its first time of doing a perfect run. Obviously, RNG is going to count for minutes, ultimately. If you can get a Zuck skip, if you can get all these other things, depending on how your triple jads go and everything. But, like, I'm just imagining what would its first time be? Because a I truly perfect run. Like I said, Venator Bow is 35% more DPS. So if the thing is finding setups for like a bunch of targets and weird drags and stuff, I don't know. <laughs> I want to see that. That would be insane. It would be nuts. <laughs> okay. So we have the Coliseum now. That's like the, you know, we have Fight Caves, Inferno, the Coliseum. Are, are we going to be getting in the next several years another sort of wave base thing? Or do you think Jagex is trying to stick with the more like short term so like i just wonder about like are we going to get something like inferno later down the line do you think that's even in jagex's like head to do something like that or if they do it's way out i i don't know I, they do a really good job with it and it's really fun uh i hope so <laughs> okay let's um cover some of these topics so mm -hmm. let's see so sax or pillar asks if you could add any single modifier slash demi boss or mechanic to coliseum what would it be oh the uh, in, in my video for the like coliseum coming up like what i was hoping from it i was talking about it giving buffs as well i i was hoping there'd be something that modified movement i'm still hoping some at some point they do that i, I want to be able to run three tiles per tick for for some like I don't know how you do it. Maybe fuck, like Mario Kart boost pads or like. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I don't I'm care. So I just I want to do that. That'd be cool. It, it's literally the, <laughs> the the perfect time to test that out is in a confined area where you can't do it outside in the in the normal game. A hundred percent. Yeah. That would be. Really Think of the cool. pillar stacks you could do if you could move further too. Like. Yeah. Yeah. No. Seriously. Some ridiculous things. <laughs> yeah. That that literally that would transform metas like it's so crazy. We would get some weird not only would you be able to like off tick things in the weirdest way possible just by running backwards and stuff but like I, I don't first of all i don't even know how your guy would look occasionally and you know how like right now if you're running diagonally toward a monster like you kind of like walk under him briefly yeah yeah i wonder if that triple is going to make you literally just run like halfway <laughs> under him and then you're like out on the other side basically at that the point. engine would surely break yeah, i don't know i'm would, i'm wishful thinking here yeah. but yeah <laughs> that would be fun though <laughs> imagine if enemies also ran at three tiles oh my god that'd be terrifying oh man you just zoom up to you yeah yeah um okay josh pillalt uh this is i don't know if we ever covered this in like the first cast but this sounds like something we kind of talked about but i i am curious was there any specific point that you realized you were well above the average player at pvm like did you start trying more advanced top methods and speedrun inferno and the cracked clicks came with it or did you notice you were good and pushed yourself harder 
Um, I was like, okay. It was when I started streaming. I just wanted to be like better. So I just like, I went and grinded Inferno for like six months or something. Like when I started streaming. So it just kind of came with that. I don't know. So do you think you had natural talent? Like are, do rhythm games click for you? Like have you ever noticed that in the past? Um, I don't play many rhythm games. I, uh, I'm good at like shooters and stuff. Like I was pretty good at Overwatch. I was like grandmaster in that. I don't know. So it's literally just practice. Like you, you are pretty convinced that it's just. I'm sure talent's a chunk of it, right? But yeah. But mostly I, I it's just getting yourself in there. The game is fairly simplistic, and the the like the only difficult inputs are doing like a huge amount of switches and a small amount of ticks. Like besides that, everything is like the the game updates at six hundred milliseconds. So like everything is doable, like for sure. It's not like a speed run of like a different game where it's like a frame perfect trick. There's no frame perfect tricks. Like being tick perfect is actually pretty easy. So I think one of the interesting things I see with people that, especially that spend a lot of time in the Inferno, because like I watch a lot of Scotty doing his runs in the morning. And one thing I notice is like, it literally just becomes second nature, the four tick cycle. It's like, you're, you're not even yep. thinking about it anymore. It's just, you just, you just feel it. You just feel when the, when the mage is going to be attacking, when the ranger is going to be attacking, when the blobs are going. And I feel like, in that, I feel like almost anybody could get to that point if you start, stayed in the inferno long enough and really critically th just thought about every single thing you're doing like that that's the important yeah. thing i think is like truly wanting to improve and using your brain to like improve and just spending weeks and weeks there it's it's like it's like learning an instrument i guess like there's nothing inherently hard about it but like eventually you get a feel for it i guess with with time you know were you doing, uh, I'm imagining you were doing Coliseum right on release. Is that correct? Like that very yeah. hour? Were you trying oh, yeah, to... I, I woke up early. Yep. Do you know uh, at like like in what place you got your quiver compared to everyone else? I know... It was not good. <laughs> <laughs> I was on I was on one hour of sleep. I had 100 deaths before I got it. So oh, I, God. I don't know. Not great. Yeah. It was day two, like late day two. So Okay. Well, that's still very impressive. Um yeah, because there was a question on Mulgoat and Addy's cast. It was like, do you think that the Coliseum damaged a lot of people's uh, egos? <laughs> <laughs> I also, one of the things that would have sped it up for me too is somebody had a sim out like day one for um, Soul. Hmm. And I saw Port Kazard already had it. And I just went like, you know, I, I kind of just want to learn this the way I did Inferno. Like, where it's like, you're... you're you got to get up to the boss and learn them yourself. I didn't really want to use the sim. So if I if I did like bother using that, that probably would have helped a lot. I would have died like, I don't know how many less times on the boss, but I died like six times on the boss or something. Okay. Yeah, that was, I feel like it did damage a lot of egos. I think people thought that, I mean, because there, there are so many players nowadays that play this game. I mean, I'm saying like oh, yeah. 12 to 14 hours a day, like just gaming out of control. And the fact that Wooks comes in, hasn't just, just just brushes off a little bit of the rust and gets a second quit, like gets the world's second quiver. Like that is so impressive. <laughs> and to see all these other like gamers just like, I don't know, just not getting it immediately. Like I, I was under the impression that people were going to get the quiver within hours. Like I actually thought, I thought I expected that too. Yeah. yeah. I was very surprised that it took almost an entire day for port to finally get his. I think a big issue with it was like figuring out what invocations work and don't. Cause like what I was picking completely changed day one. I was running max range and taking bees for the like max HP, like heals off them. Cause I'd never seen the boss. I didn't mm -hmm. know they even spawned on the boss. So like if you, if you figured out really quick, like I can't take relentless, I can't take, you know, like figure out what works and what doesn't, then that helps a lot. Yeah. I think it's important also to just remember, like if, if, for those listening, if you were there day one, that shit was overwhelming. It was oh yeah, so overwhelming. It's not like what we see now, where you in the back of your mind you know everything that goes on in the Coliseum till the very end. It's like you are blind to what is happening next. You have no idea. And the boss itself, I remember when Mulgoat first got to the boss, I was like, okay, this is just a friendly reminder that yeah, like this is going to be so hard to get the world first in because, <laughs> I, like I was expecting this boss 
to be insane. You know, I was expecting, because it already is pretty, like, obviously an insane boss. But once you get it down, you have it down. I thought it was going to be truly, truly difficult. Like, something like Awaken Leviathan. Just, just some something where, like, okay, all of a sudden he's shooting out missiles every tick and you got to run and dodge all this other <laughs> stuff. Like, I have no idea, but, like, that that was going through my head. So I was like, I'm actually, very glad he's not that. Yeah. I think he's perfect right <laughs> yeah. where he's at. I think he's perfect, too. And especially for, like, the average player. We got to also remember, like, the, the quiver was not meant just for, you know, the top point zero 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 one of people. 1% of people. Well, you're supposed to you're supposed to grind this for money too. So it should be something you can do with like time. So it's true. I think he's perfect. He, he is grindable. You can do him perfectly. Yep. Do you think the risk versus reward element hit at all nowadays? Like I'm I'm, I'm saying I now had it, as in... I had it in one run. I got Glaive on wave 9 and I went, "Yeah, I'm finishing the run, baby." <laughs> oh, may, oh, was that like on, like early on just just not to risk it? Cuz I if it was the yeah. Glaive, 100% I'm just going to dip. It's just like I, I, I think the bright play is dipping, but it was fun. It, it's more fun to like finish it. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, no, that was uh, my Sunfire piece. I had it at wave eleven, and I was streaming. I was like, I'm gonna go for the boss. Like I could have cashed out, but I was like, Nah, we're sending it. And I got you it. gotta go. Yeah. You gotta send it. Yeah, sure. Gotta. <laughs> um, the risk versus reward truly doesn't seem like it's there, though. Honestly, no, I don't think so. Yeah. I I would love if, like the the value of your pot increase the like reward potential in the next roll or like you know something like that oh man if you had a glaive and it like gave you a five times higher unique rate for the remaining waves like maybe you would send it <laughs> <laughs> yeah i just think the only way to truly make it very high risk high reward is to make it like endless like you, you kind of have yeah. to make it endless like i feel like because at this point you're just completing runs. It's not even hard at this point. It's just like, okay, we'll just complete it. So, yeah, I don't know. But Adicon brought up a thing. What are your thoughts on an endless mode being you get to Seoul and then you have a chance of just running another Coliseum? So you could just endlessly run multiple Coliseums, repeated, 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 and maybe things level up a tiny little bit. So not like you're having to... So the invocations or the modifiers would refresh, but... You go in there and everything is going to start hitting you just a tiny bit harder. Like everything gains like one max hit or something like that. And you can just risk all that loot and the quiver from before and run an entire new Coliseum. Sure. They don't even necessarily need to be harder. I, they're, they're saying you would keep the invocations, I think, of the poll blog. So. Mm, okay. Well, if you kept the modifiers, yeah, that would be. Yeah. That'd be wild. Actually starting wave one with just a bunch of stuff and then. Yeah, so there's two ways you could do it. You could, I, we were talking about this on stream. If you're doing endless mode, you could either allow banking, you, you put a chest, you put that big gold chest outside, mm -hmm. and that's where you actually, like, if you choose, you cannot loot it when he pops it down, and it's outside. So you can go grab it whenever you want. If you choose, you can leave it there. So when you leave, you go bank, you get new supplies, you go do another run. And then that loot goes in that chest and repeating. And then the more loot that's in there, the more loot you're going to get. Right? That's a thing you could do. The other way is, don't allow banking and it's endless like truly endless you just keep going and then it's more of a like supply management can you can you flick hard enough to get through it uh -huh. and then you reward more for like those repeated runs i definitely think it would be better to be able to resupply um what i'm interested in though is if the, if the modifiers are staying wouldn't it just basically be about like your second or maybe early third run where you just have absolute max modifiers on yeah yeah, so maybe this was like a different like design they had earlier where they would like level up further. You could you could make it so they have like a minor thing that gets them to tier four or like tier infinite, right? Where it's like relentless adds one max hit per tier over three. Yeah. Then you can just take it over and over and over. Like there's probably ways they could I mean I don't know. Some of them don't work with that though. Like yeah. what, what are you gonna do with myopia? You're at one already, right? So Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I honestly, I don't even think it would be that big of a deal to just have it where it is right now. Because if you had every single modifier on right now, that sounds like hell already. Like, like, yeah, it does. Like the fact that you yeah. already have Doom and Bees and Solar Flare and, all, and Totem, just that, that's already too much. Like there's too much going on. So at that point, I yeah. feel like you could chill. And yeah, oh my God, that just doesn't even sound fun. Oh my God, that sounds actually... <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it? Can't you still get bees three? Isn't bees three still a thing? Yep, bees three exists. So yep. bees three, they're, totem. They're changing it so they respawn slower. I think. Yeah, yeah, and they yeah move that's slower. true. That's true. 
So I don't know how manageable it'll be, but uh, yeah, that would have to be endless. Uh, don't don't go any far. Don't uh, we don't want Beast Four. We don't want you know Doom One where you just take one hit. Like just make it so <laughs> Doom Infinite. Yeah, <laughs> Doom Infinite. Just, you die when the wave starts. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm not gonna lie. If you had to deal with all that chaos, because think about it. By by your third run, you actually are like this is truly difficult at this point, and it's just obnoxious. And you're risking tons of loot, so the reward should be incredibly high at that point. Like your chest, yeah. your chest should just be juicing out every single wave, like just nuts, nut stuff. And it'll be so fun to watch. And if you're gonna do that too, the the rewards have to be actually good. That's if we're trying to make something know, somewhat yeah. like Telos, like he drops, he dropped all the best items like at the time. So I don't know. I mean, you what? could make all the, the common loot, all your loot. It's just kind of boring. Yeah. I, I prefer to be risking something super expensive in there that I just got just because it's worth it. You're right. You're actually right. It is kind of a shame that there's not like some sort of Tebow item from the Coliseum. That's super, super rare. Imagine. Yeah. That would be really cool. Or if they were to come out, I don't know, with maybe some like extremely amazing cosmetics from there or I something. Think, I think the Glaive could be that. It's just... If they decided to make it the best draining item, then it could be that. Yeah. But they're we'll also it's scary. They're also buffing the drop rates of well, at least the Sunfire armors, you can get it at wave three. I think everything else is mm -hmm. wave six up or seven. No, nope, Echo Crystals are three as well. So. Okay. So just the just glaive. Just the glaive is seven. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think that's pretty well balanced, at least in my opinion. Um, yeah, that's like the tier of reward they are, I think. So then you just like to buff the items a little bit, and then you're probably good. Okay, so maybe they couldn't just, you know, fully capture the idea of an endless mode that's super, super high risk or reward. But hopefully in the future, they are going to do something like that. And it, it ha you're, you're right. It has to have something absolutely insane on the unique table. It's got to be crazy. If somebody's got a Tebow in their chest and they keep going, that is content. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that is rad. That is awesome. Yeah, that would be absolutely insane. That that's truly content. Yeah. Oh yeah. Right. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's see. Quietly grinding asks, "Are you ready for the dry streak of content incoming for end game play <laughs> game level players? Oh, no. I feel like until we get another raid in a year uh, or so, we're not going to see much." I don't think so. What's slated? Uh, Farlamore two had um, a group boss. I think they said right. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's it, as far as I know. Yeah, we're not getting stuff for a bit, I guess. <laughs> is, is the Coliseum enough to scratch that itch for another year and a I'll half? I'll be doing Coliseum for a long time, so I'm okay. I'm really happy with Coliseum. I, I was expecting Coliseum to be um, like a just based on the things I was hearing with like the negative modifiers and glory. And I was expecting like a week of content out of it, but I'm I'm pleasantly surprised. I think it's pretty good. That's good. Yeah, I uh, I'm probably i'm placing my bets I'll, i don't know when sailing's coming out and i don't know if anything like i don't think any new crazy thing's going to be coming out on release of sailing whenever that is so i think we really are waiting for raids for although i will say jagex has occasionally surprised us with just random stuff i remember like obviously hard mode top didn't really hit that well but they did like propose fasanis around that same time like hard yeah. modes and they, those, those are surprises like we were not expecting that so yeah, and, maybe could hope for something not slated. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll see. Okay. Uh, Anfield asks, what's the current state of the HLC after the Coliseum? And now you have had your hands on it for a while. Would you like to s keep the invocation system or go to something completely different? Um, so they, they're not going to do anything like that, right? Uh, it's too much... It's too much dev time to uproot the system and change it, I think. But I, I did want them to do a buff and a nerf at the same time. If you do the kind of thing where it's like volatility also damages enemies, like that's a clear like benefit and a negative at the same time. Like that kind of thing is cool. Mm -hmm. uh, but how do you... I don't think you can do that for a lot of them as well. Like what, what is myopia? They also have shorter range. <laughs> I don't know, man. I'm a little bit bothered. It would have been... Yeah, it would have been really cool to have a lot of buffs and a lot of nerfs, though. Like that would have been sweet. 
So I'm doing like, uh, so I did a lot of my Coliseum runs, like the noob way, like noob tube way, where you're just like literally blood barraging, auto casting with myopia yeah. three on. <laughs> just, you're, oh, yeah, still, yeah. you're still 10 tiles back. Um, <laughs> I, I'm actually a little bit bothered by the fact that they, no, I'm okay with them going full out and saying myopia, even with manual casting, you can't do it um, far away. But instead, they've still allowed you to manually cast far away and just not be able to auto cast ancients. So it's like a really massive. Wait, they did? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I didn't it's, understand it's so that. Stupid. Oh. It, it, it's so stupid. It's stupid for me because I'm just saying, okay, I can understand if you're really trying to make myopia difficult in every way. Like, so no matter what, you can't attack far away. But they they still decided to keep it so you can manually cast. So people are still going to be manually casting. So you've literally just made it. So this is just more tedious because everyone that's newbie is still going to be auto casting from 10 tiles back. <laughs> so it's like, you've just made it worse for every player. Like now it's just a matter of misclicking occasionally. It's it just, definitely should not work with manual casting. That's, that's what I'm weird. saying. Like just go okay. all out and just remove it entirely <laughs> huh? because at this point you're just, this is silly. Like, why can't we just auto cast it? It was the same fucking thing. We're just manually having to cast it. It's so stupid. Huh. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's strange. It's okay. dumb. I'm a little bit just, I'm just bothered <laughs> by it. Like, just get rid of the entire thing already. That's definitely silly. Yeah. Definitely silly. Um, Sandy. Okay. I didn't know this, but Sandy asks, why did you break my boy, uh, Oz's 1619 so fast? Did he get a 1619 like right before you got your 1610 <laughs> or something? Okay. Yeah. Happened? So what? What happened is I had wreck at seventeen twenty five, okay, and then I wake up and the board's I don't was it sixteen nineteen? Yeah, I wake yeah. up and that's the board. It's a minute faster. I'm like, what even happened? And also, is it pops in my Discord and he, he's like, yeah, I got it. Immediately, I'm like, this is, I, I'm like, I'm like, this is milk. There's no way somebody took a minute off. There's no way. <laughs> uh, there's a there's a bug right now. If you don't know where Light Bear can between waves like start regenning your spec if you put it on so i, I was saw like, right. that i saw that there's like a four tick thing too like you could a, 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 i think you just click on the light bearer every four ticks or something like that and it keeps saving it or every five ticks i saw oh, you just put it on it's not that deep <laughs> no, 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 no 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 but i saw it where oh you, with the change they did yeah um, yeah, yeah where i saw like, like you can like use ultor and just click on the ultor every five ticks and then so you're swinging and you're getting absolute max swings but you're also getting the light. Oh, I didn't effect. know it worked the other way. I didn't even know that. It's something oh, like that. I was watching some huh. sort of clip on Mogo. That sounds so obnoxious. That is really obnoxious. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's really good, though. Yeah. The AIs are going to take advantage of that once the AIs. Yeah, yeah. Game, yeah. <laughs> oh no. Oh, but speaking of, I just want to like quickly go back to like that AI like solving the inferno, bro. Can you imagine? They have like ten way switches going on or some shit. Just. Just something nuts where they're not even losing any prayer points. So they just have absolute max. Oh, they take zero restore in. Yeah. yeah. So it'd be zero just, restore, max melee, everything because that's best in slot. But you, you're doing full switches to like get closer to things. So it'd be like instant eight way Tebow shoots. And then like, yeah, that kind of thing. Yeah. Oh my God, dude. I want to see it so bad. And the thing is they would, and, and what you would do is you would like even plug in like maximize chances of survival too. So they're not going to be chancing themselves to just have the ultimate god run where they're trying to risk every single thing it's like no no, no. try to tr actually that would even be more interesting actually to really try to risk everything and then simulate like a million runs and see what the best possible run they ever got was that's got I, surely that's like 33 minutes oh, out of a million runs something absurd perfection yeah, low 30s, i think yeah no that'd be fucking nuts to watch that'd be so sick to watch oh i was saying yeah, I thought it, I thought it was milked, and then he was he was in my Discord, and he posted the clip of the boss, and there's no light bear in sight. I'm like, holy, he just got the run. <laughs> so, uh, I'm, how many my, hours after? My, my approach to that was like, all right, so I'm gonna go for like sub 17, and then I'll start working my way down and try to get, and then I just got <laughs> I just got the run. It just happened <laughs> in was like that, two hours of streaming. So wait, wait, I was like, wait, okay. So was that what it is? You were like at a 17:20, and you just it was a 17:25, and oh I took it down to what it is right now. God. I was just like, okay, I just got the run. Oh my god, that is wild. What so Asa's time is insane as well. Yeah. So has anybody beaten either of yours or his time? Or are you both just not as far as I know? I don't think so. I guess nobody would really know unless he posted it. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's why that literally that makes me think that 
easily sub 1530s are possible because the fact that you're just getting a god run like within <laughs> weeks like that no that's not the god that's not truly the I god think run. I think after a long period of time yeah 1530 for sure I don't yeah, know about yeah. 15 though I'm thinking I'm thinking sub 15 is possible never know yeah so something some glitch is gonna happen or there's gonna be like some like blocking the minotaur from even spawning just by like standing near it it's just some stupid thing that comes into the game who knows we'll see Okay, um, <laughs> Anonymous Garba asks, question one, how dare you? <laughs> okay. How dare so, I? Yeah. <laughs> I oh, just no. love that. Question, how dare you? <laughs> um, okay, favorite part of one plus one to real? <laughs> what is that? Tell me. That's so fun. Oh, man. Um for the people who don't know, a Condor Condor seven hundred on my on my stream will um help me do Turiel and we do it one plus one. Um he has found some very, very, very advanced stuff. <laughs> my favorite um if you haven't seen it, there the cow teleport when you're when you're um doing the home teleport animation, you know you can swap it out to the cow that kicks you. Mm -hmm. That that actually provides blocking in a three by three around your character when you do it for one tick. <laughs> So what he does is he goes for like desert lizard tasks. I'll slap a cannon. I'll, I'll slap a cannon down, or for sulfur lizards, I'll slap a cannon down. Sit underneath me and just spam the teleport, and I can just pipe the entire room because they can't reach me. And it's it's single way. So as long as they can't hit me, I can just keep spamming. Oh my it's god, so good. that is incredible. <laughs> so it just the first tick it blocks for only one single. It tick. blocks. So if you spam it, it, you can just permanently have blocking in a three by three around you. So you can like fully block cannons out. That is the stupidest but most amazing thing ever. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> That's awesome. It, that's always it was cool seeing uh, people like learning how to like blood barrage blood velds or like ice barrage blood velds and like the catacombs oh, yeah. by just doing those weird like walking patterns and stuff with a bunch of things. Like I love discovering just stupid things like that. Yeah, awesome. Uh, <laughs> what's a mechanic or strategy you'd like the devs to explore more in future PBM? A mechanic. Um, we were be, talking about movement earlier. That's really cool. Yeah, I'm. I'm gonna just say my piece. Um, I yeah. love the Dark Souls sort of like loading up yeah. for an attack, and just trying to get that timing right because it's so easy. Ultimately, it's a fucking tick window. Like you're chilling, but the pressure that can be had. Like it, it, imagine that attack in Soul one shots you. Imagine something like that. Oh, so yeah. there, there truly is a lot of pressure on. Don't miss this. Although it's perfectly free to just get it. It's a tick window. You're good. But something like that in the future where you have some Dark Souls movements where this guy's just swinging. And as soon as you know the patterns, it's easy. It's super, super easy to do it. But don't mess up, basically. I love the, that. The rewarding the perfect grapple with a max hit is sick as well. Like so They totally sick. should use that other places. So See, th they could even do it with that Dark Souls attack, that triple attack. If you were getting yeah. perfect parries on that, even like that would be. So I think they fun. should change that too because it's a fifty-fifty choice of which one he does. I think it should just work for both for mm -hmm. sure. Yeah, I'm, I'm a huge fan. Did you see the what was it? Was it the Previn clip that he teleported? He clicked his max. Cape. Oh yeah, <laughs> just teleports out. <laughs> his max. He had his max cape to tell he has. <laughs> oh, that's so tilting. No, it's horrible. Yeah, the oh, movement, man. the being able to run three tiles per tick would be pretty fascinating, though. Something like that. There's there's loads of things that they could like mess with. I I was thinking for the mobs in Colosseum too. Like, what if some of the melees were like soul, where they did like an area like attack like in front of them or something? They had to like Ooh. do a pattern, flinch in between or something. Yeah, no, they they could. I remember talking to you about TOA, and you were really at the time really wanting wardens p4 or just wardens in general the p3 into p4 warden whatever that is just you wanted to make it actually enjoy i think it was p3 wardens you just wanted there yeah. to be more of what's going on because it's just what is it's just nothing happening just and walk you, back and forth three <laughs> tiles <Yep. laughs> yeah so do you feel any sort of way with coliseum do you think there's enough going on in all the waves like do you think it it has enough substance all the way throughout yeah even the like boring waves you can still like bring a venator bow and like wiggle the mage around and find some weird setups and stuff to like make it faster so you're always you can always be doing something to like speed it up at least it's yeah. never like you're just sitting there like all right when is this over this i don't i don't really feel that in runs 
Okay, Jeff asks, are you still planning on uploading RS3 videos? I've been on uh, OSRS the past couple of years, but or now, but still enjoy RS3 content. Was excited to see how you would de rust and climb the PVM ranks. Um, okay, so the RS3, th I was playing RS3 for like three months um, and enjoying it a lot. Um, they put out a lot of really, really rough updates. Um, they, okay, so if you. <laughs> They put out a battle pass, like a Fortnite battle pass. The The final reward on it was you take, I think it was 15% less damage from your next Zami run. So the equivalent in old school would be like the end of a battle pass being you take 15% less damage your next Inferno. Like, I don't who. <laughs> it's boggling that they even like attempted that. So the community didn't like that very much yeah. for some reason. <laughs> They had a so they had a really odd. rough Halloween event with a bunch of microtransactions, and then um, the reason I ended up quitting um, is that a mod, I don't remember who, one of the mods was saying they were going to remove kill streaks from Telos and um, Archglacor, and that Why? was like the main thing. It was so they were saying it was pumping out too much loot, which is like an Archglacor thing. Yeah. If you've ever seen one of the loot tabs for Archglacor, it'll have like five hundred thousand water talismans in it and stuff like that, like. It definitely was giving too much loot. <laughs> 500,000. Literally like 500,000, yeah. Jesus fucking Christ. <laughs> the economy is literally on fire in that game. It's crazy, yeah. <laughs> oh so my God. <laughs> instead of like coming up with a, uh, like interesting way to like fix it or like get around like the ridiculous quantities, they just, just were going to ax it. So I was like, nah, I'm good. Um, that, that mod went to the old school team, I think. So I don't think that's happening so maybe someday i'll go back but i saw i i watched a few of your rs3 streams i remember you doing grinding agility you're having a great time i remember that grinding agility on rs3 i was on the one. i was on the really boring stuff i was just about dipping into the fun stuff okay. i was killing queen black dragon and that kind of thing but yeah when i heard that news i was like all right i'll just play old school <laughs> there, there was definitely like some sort i don't know about mass exodus but it definitely seemed like a lot of big rs3 streamers hopped over as well to osrs and i do remember there was like some really weird stuff going on twitter like the twitter drama bit between like the rs3 team and the player base and it's it felt like the mm. rs3 team was doubling down on a lot of their bad takes the yeah the the big issue is that they released necromancy so necromancy is a new um, combat skill not really new anymore like beginning of the year um, it is like in the center of the combat triangle so the way it works is it's like P two warden damage where it just calculates the accuracy and the max hit and it just gives you a hit every time like you always hit almost the mm. same every time and the main issue with it is that all the like upgrades for it are from the, the skill itself or doing quests so it would be like if for ranged compared to the other styles you to get a tebow you did like desert treasure 2 and it just gave you a tebow right so it's like all all of the other items in the game have dropped like dramatically in price and necromancy just has taken over not to mention necromancy is just the most powerful style so it's like it's kind of ruined a lot of their balance with everything they're they're working on fixing it but it's it's pretty clear why all the like high level guys, all the PVMers and stuff have like left. <laughs> That's rough. Do do you think like the skill level transfers like if you were only to play R S three, I know um there's been a few R S three people that have moved over and they seem like they're picking up OSRs very, very quickly. Obviously they're similar games, but do you think the skill transfers over pretty nicely or not? I think really? um so they had a bunch of their the R S three streamers made a gim together, so like Lucario is like the wooks of that game. He's in mm -hmm. there. Um, Wazi as well. I think Wazi um, just did Inferno, and I think he did it in a very low number of attempts. So yeah, he. I was watching him do CG, and he seemed like he has been playing OSRs for years. Like it, he just seems very. Yeah, it sounds like he's it. just destroying. So what about Lucario? If he's the wooks of R3, is he good at OSRs? He hasn't. I've, I've been talking with him. He hasn't gotten to Inferno yet. I don't think. So I'm curious, but. That's going to be interesting. I it's, think he'll do really well. We'll see. I'm excited for him to do like Blood Torbo or something. Something that's super, super fast paced. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's yeah, I think he'd be really good at Blood Torbo for sure. He, he's uh, RS3 is all about the like insanely high APM at like the high level, mm. like PBM. Like they're doing the ridiculous like switches constantly, like that kind of thing. So there's like, 
the elemental weaknesses and range style weaknesses coming out. Oh yeah. Relatively. Is, was that what the beta was for or I yep. can't. Okay. Did you get to mess around with any of that? I sure did. <laughs> was there anything that stood out to you with all those kind of changes? Yeah, a lot of things stood out. I'm, okay. I really dislike that. <laughs> I really dislike that. Oh, update. just overall, like everything, you just dislike I, it. I despise it, yeah. Okay, that, I, I actually need to hear this. Like, this is actually like a... Okay. Because I want to make... I, I haven't even tested the beta worlds because I usually am just... I'm just sitting there and I'm like, I'm just overwhelmed. Like, I don't even know where to start, basically. I'll just wait. <laughs> I'll wait until No Monkey and other people just start talking about it. So It's what, a lot of stuff to mess with, yeah. Um, is, so yeah, what, let's hear what they did, they added elemental weaknesses so they added a stat that monsters can have where they're weak to a style it could be weak to water fire whatever it is um so if it's 50 percent more weak to fire it takes 50 percent more damage right so like ice demon yep. that's an issue I'm, I'm gonna get back to that but um uh, the other thing they did is they added split weaknesses for range so there's heavy uh medium and light or heavy standard and light so heavy weak is um crossbows and ballista and then standard is bows, and then light is like thrown stuff, like blowpipe, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So I, I'll talk about the range split. What, what is that? They had a huge um, chart of like weaknesses they changed on a bunch of things. So I, I like went and looked at some of the cases. Um, first of all, issue with having heavy include ballista and crossbows is that if you're trying to encourage someone to use a ballista, if crossbow is the same as it, you will use a crossbow. You're not going to ballista anything. Yeah. So it's not really succeeding there. So what this allows them with the range split is they can encourage you to use a crossbow. They can encourage you to use a Bofa or Tebow. And they can encourage you to use a blowpipe. So it's not really changing your um your variety. You're using the same four things you would use everywhere, right? So they added the main range things they changed are Baba has crossbow weakness. Um and I went, oh, okay, does that mean we use crossbow in some cases? And I went and calced pretty much every single situation. A mid-level Iron Man, a max main, um, you... A, a Hosta in, like, standard, like, gear is a beating a, a rune crossbow in, like, basic gear, always. So it's not really doing anything there. You're, you're not going to crossbow Baba still, like, ever. Mm -hmm. uh, max, max range is not better. I, I, it's not even close to, to fanging. So you won't do that either. So um, is that mainly just a problem with the heavy set? Like just the fact that crossbows and ballistas suck? Yeah, already. if you're going to do this, I don't know what you do. Do you make the ultra heavy category for ballista or something? I don't know. Do we I really almost, need to encourage people to use a ballista? I don't know. Like I, I can understand where they're... Uh, yeah, so that's one thing is... I don't even think these balances, and I want to still hear a bunch of your thoughts on this kind of stuff, but I just think, it, I don't yeah. think it's really necessary for it to now become the meta. It's just that it is now getting a little bit of a boost. And I would even say, this might be unfounded entirely, but and I might just backtrack what I'm saying, but what if those heavy weaknesses also allowed, I don't know, some sort of extra max hit or something like that if it has just enough of that heavy weakness so like for heavy specifically maybe you actually do get a slight damage multiplier if it's low enough or if you know the heavy is weak enough yeah. or something like that like i don't even think that's necessary first of all but if we wanted to go down that road i i'm imagining by the way like uh, well first of all the um the dt2 bosses started just shitting out ballista or not ballista um Started shitting out javelin heads and javelins. Oh, yeah. So I'm expecting, honestly, very soon to have a new ballista that just goes wild. And I maybe. think in the future, those new ballistas that maybe come out or maybe new crossbows, maybe like a two-handed crossbow, like a Carol's crossbow that's even more powerful, comes out and it actually starts proving these defensive um you know weaknesses like it starts it starts making an actual difference yeah maybe they have a bunch of plans in the background i don't know i'm looking at it in the current game and i'm not yeah i'm not seeing it so the, that the thing is too is problem. like what you're saying is like um if something gets an extra max hit from this style they like they already can do things like that like they were planning on giving tecton elder mall weakness right like does it need a special weakness for you to bring a unique item for a boss i i don't know yeah 
The the thing with the elemental weaknesses. Oh, I was gonna say the other the other two things with ranged are shamans are slightly weaker to blowpipe, which was already good on them. So you'll you'll be blowpipier at shaman, <laughs> and then leviathan is weaker to crossbows, which was already good on leviathan. So you'll be crossbowier at leviathan. Yeah. So those are like your. It doesn't change anything. Yeah. Um, the elemental weaknesses too. They gave it to a bunch of things. They gave it to like mole, um, nightmare totems. Um, Ice Demon. So the elemental changes also come with a 40% um, damage nerf to tomes. So they're only 10% now instead of 50%. Yep. So I was curious because they said Ice Demon is 50% weak to fire in the in the chart, and he already is 50% weak. So I'm like, okay, the numbers aren't adding up. Either he's a 10% higher max hit or a 40% lower. So I went and looked, and yeah, 40% lower. Uh, Ice Demon is 18 less max hits with Surge. That's pretty cool. Uh, <laughs> no, surely that's surely that's not intended, right? No, but it's, my, pro my... it's probably intended, let's be honest. That, you maybe, think? Who knows? Maybe, maybe, I don't know. Well, well, the fact that, I mean, it has to be intended unless the accuracy is going to be holding that because I don't actually know what already happened to Ice Demon. Was that... Is, Right now in the game, if you were to obviously, I think they were all hidden. I think I think there are a few instances currently in game where there are elemental weaknesses on like some quest monsters and stuff. Does Ice Demon already have that in game where there is a fifty? You get fifty percent more damage for fire already. It's the exact same. Is it yeah. accuracy too, or is it just um, damage? Let me check. I think it's just max it. Okay. Yeah, well, I'm pretty sure because you're yeah. fairly inaccurate with with fire spells like i know from okay. running so yeah no they might just have to like manually adjust that or even make ice demon like a hundred percent or just something to balance out the tome changes right so my question obviously like they can change that and fix yeah. it right it's probably yeah. just a mistake is it worth adding all of these mistakes for whatever the benefit is and i'm trying to see the benefit and mm -hmm. i don't i'm not seeing it <laughs> um i messed with like nightmare totems, I was like, "Oh, is harm staff bis on the pillars now?" Um, it's, it's, it's close the gap a bit. It's closer to shadow, but shadow still wins, like definitely. Well, because shadow thralls. gets to use the heart too. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So shadow max is a, a little bit higher than harm. Obviously, harm is four tick. I think it's still better DPS to use harm, but then you don't have thralls, and that's really bad at nightmare. Yeah, so. that's not fun. Interesting. So are there any places where, I mean, because I'm assuming, I actually, I have no idea about this. Has the harm orb shot up? It has. I don't know why, though, because it's not useful anywhere. Well, <laughs> Unlucky. I checked, well, like, I checked all the bosses, like, that have weaknesses, and it's not. Like, Mole has water surge weakness. I brought, I bring Tome of Water. It's, uh -huh. it's not, it's not beating a fang, even, like, really in max yeah. mage and everything oh god so max melee like... fang versus max mage harm you, you would still fang it okay well that i that kind of makes sense i think it's i think they're trying to see as well like a mid-game approach to this where i don't fucking know like it feels like it's never uh, i think they're the, just the... trying to get closer so things aren't so out of place like if you were to cast water <laughs> a water spell against mole right now like you are actually clowning around like you're completely there... trolling <laughs> I thought about it even like from low level. Pers a lot of people are telling me, well, maybe it's just aimed at like low level stuff. And yeah. I was thinking, okay, like you're fire giants and that kind of thing. Uh -huh. But like, if you're a low level, and you probably don't even know this as a low level, but if you're a low level and you're using a cannon on fire giants, right, with with water spells, your cannon doesn't use your magic accuracy for the for the accuracy on the cannon. It's using your highest next accuracy. That's how it works with magic. Mm. So like, it'll use like your 20, 20 crush bonus on your staff or whatever which is really bad. So, like, if they're just trying to add some flavor and make it so, like, oh, fire giants are weak to water, they already can do that kind of thing with Ice Demon. Like, why not just put in that same line where they, they're 50% weak to, wa like, water, right? Yeah. I don't know. <sighs> Interesting. It. I feel like this is a lot of engine engine tweaking for, like, little I don't, i'm not seeing the benefit okay. i'm not seeing it but is there anything that's broken have you noticed or is everything just it doesn't feel like it's even worth spending the time doing this there's nothing like that's broken though and that you've seen well initially with the yeah, there's a lot of things that are broken initially well, broken with the as in like this is like actually changing metas like significantly oh with the weaknesses themselves yeah no no okay. no nothing is changing it's making things better at the places they were or um not changing anything okay 
Interesting. I, yeah, no, I think, I mean, this is just my personal thoughts. I mean, obviously, you know, this isn't really making any crazy changes, but I think what they're trying to do is just add some sort of avenue for the future of weapons. So, you know, blowpipe's not always best or TiVo's not always best. And so maybe there's a position for a ballista to come in that's going to be crazy against certain things. Um, yeah, maybe. Maybe they have items in the catalog. I don't know. Yeah, but you're right. It does feel... I, I will say, when you do a massive change like this, like that requires a beta, mm -hmm. you break a bunch of things too. So a lot of the... And, and it's in beta. They can fix all this. But in beta, the mage thrall currently is a zombie thrall. It walks up to things. Oh, yeah, it, I saw that. And then also, I believe in Colosseum, you do not one shot that mage anymore. It is it is normal hits. So when you do like a massive engine change like this, like things across the entire game are going to break, like yep. all over the place. You're right. So it's like to, to undertake a change like this, I feel like there has to be a good reason. A good reason is like Toa with like smart pathing. Like we didn't have smart pathing before. If you don't know, like things um, normally just like move towards you with Southwest tile. Mm -hmm. But in Toa, like Aka has smart pathing where you can like butterfly around him, that kind of thing. Yep. So like that's a that's a huge engine change, but if it's probably worth it because it's adding like a mechanic to a raid, right? So I get it there, but I don't know if I'm seeing it here. Yeah. Okay. So there there are I think at least in my opinion I think there is some good that comes from this mainly because there's no broken stuff. Yes, there's gonna be uh, the game's gonna break obviously, but that happens with every yeah. update. But it doesn't seem like there's anything that's actually like overpowered. I think it's just kind of leveling up all the really crappy like uh, elemental. I checked for, example. for three hours with um with calcs, and I tried to like from a bunch of different perspectives. I don't think anything's really changing, but okay, yeah. But I do understand your point. Like it, it almost feels like why even bother potentially breaking the game and potentially doing all these things if there's yeah. really no actual purpose. So, uh, one thing that would be cool, you know, is, you know, if there is something that comes out that has a significant weakness to fire or something, the harm actually will just start slapping, but we already have a shadow, which feels weird. The fact that they literally, like, honestly, if I were to, like, be in charge of this game or something, like, dude, there, <laughs> there needs to be something seriously done with a nightmare. I mean, you need to, like, either... I don't know. I just feel like those all those orbs, like the harmonized staff in general, is just the most wonky thing ever. And it was yeah. really wonky with the Tome of Fire being fifty percent, where it's just like, okay, this is just a fire surge weapon that's basically useless everywhere now that you released a shadow. Like, what was the point? Like, what was it? Even it does the point? seem like they're trying to like make it not that with like the Tome nerfs and that kind of thing. They want to make it like a thing where you're, I don't know, where yeah. it's like second fist to shadow, like on, on multiple things with multiple styles, I guess. One of the best changes they are making with this whole update, though, is the strikes and the bolts and the blasts. They all deal the same max hits once you hit the fire version. I love that. Like, I love that wind strike will now hit eight. Yeah, that is good. That's really yeah. cool. I've been wanting that for so long. So that's really Yeah, cool. that's how it always should have been. For exactly. Sure. Okay, interesting. So I guess we'll see over time what exactly happens. Uh, do you think, is this even something that's being pulled or is this just an integrity change? Like, no, it's part of rebalance, so it just goes in. Okay. Well, we'll see what happens. At least nothing's like super, super crazy. And yeah. I'm kind of excited, but I understand it just feels odd to even pursue. But... They, the, they had a similar thing um, with poison penetration and um, ice penetration, I remember. Um, they were pulling that. It, it never went in because it failed the pull, but they were pulling, like, if you had, like, special weapons, if you had, like, a percent chance to, like, add a small amount of poison or a shorter freeze. Um, but they already went in the back end and did all the engine work anyways, and then they also broke things like BA for six months and that kind of thing. So <laughs> I'm just always wary about that kind of thing. Yeah. It's just like, why are we doing this? <laughs> oh, oh one, thing, one thing I didn't touch on was, you know how they're changing? Like one of the examples in the Coxie video was like gargoyles being super, super like weak to crush now, just like stupidly weak and everything else gets a little bit higher. So it, you're really wanting to go there with crush. And I think there's some other examples of the normal okay, melee that. That makes sense. triangles sure. kind of like changing. So that that's kind of cool. It gives things a little bit more of like a, you know, 
I guess that makes sense to me. A weakness, yeah. yeah. So, well, uh, did you notice any of those changes in like any of the bosses? Like something where like you're normally slashing because it's just like whatever, but now you can't or something. They or, didn't or really there change any? anything there from what I was. Oh, um, they're just making Duke lower slash defense, just like straight up, so he's a little easier. Okay, um, that's nice. And then, um, they gave Mystics crush weakness, but you're like not gonna, you're not gonna like mace them or something. So I don't know. <laughs> Huh? They seem kind of a lot of the changes just seem strange. I, I don't think there were any like big like weakness changes that mattered mm. anywhere. Okay, well I guess I guess we'll just see about that. All right. Um Twiddle asks, how do you feel uh the OSRS team has been doing with their limited tool set? And what other unique things could they be doing for future content? This is the first time we've seen a perfect parry mechanic requiring players to visit their equipment tab with precise timing. Mm. Limited tool set being like the engine that RuneScape is in. I yeah. guess, yeah. Uh, I think they still are like coming up with lots of... We had the Muzpa thing as well with the, um, the smiting Muzpa, which um, was newer. Yeah, I actually really like that. I, I love stuff like that. That was a cool mechanic, yep. yeah. There, there's a lot of things I could still do. I'm, I'm still waiting for um, some other like things with overheads. Um, I've, I've always been waiting for like neutral attack to come out that requires no protection prayer over your head to like Ooh, block. Ooh, yeah, totally. Uh, there, there's totally stuff they can do. They, I mean, they, they kind of really they kind of tasted that with the sort of like parry attack and soul where you actually have yeah. to turn your prayer. You off. have to have it off for yep. a bit, yeah. You're right, though. That would be cool. Oh, apparently you can't... You, you have to have it off. You can't even have it on prey range and then melee. Uh, I don't know if you could have a different prayer. If you no, have no, 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 melee no, no, on you can't. and like, flick it. You can't. You no, no, can't. Yeah, yeah. You, somebody told me they tr they had prey range on a tick before, and then they tried to click prey melee, and they couldn't. It was like you, It has to be off entirely. A I did tick not before. know that. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense, though. Yep. Interesting. Yeah, I definitely want more of those Dark Souls mechanics. Um, the neutral sounds actually really cool. I, I was even thinking, like, you know, even something like Leviathan, if there was some gray orbs that shot out where you had to turn, oh, yeah. turn it off. That ups the complexity a lot. It does, days. yeah. And, and like I was saying as well, with, like, maybe the, like, AoE, like, attacks more are, are kind of interesting. I like the, like, flinching a pattern, like, with movement to, like, hit a boss. That's kind of cool. Like, Soul is one of the only things doing that. It's, like, Soul and Warden, and that's it. Mm -hmm. okay so this is a question i have been bringing up with a lot of like high level pvmers lately what are your thoughts on overloads is that inevitable is that coming do you want it and what does that mean um, for the game so the the big thing with overloads besides just like the big buff to damage is also that you can uh brew everywhere at like no downside because you can brew every 15 seconds yeah well if they're like chambers overloads right i'm assuming that's what we mean by overloads Assuming it's just overloads, okay. yeah. I guess there's a world where they don't do that, and they're just a big buff. But. Well, what would what would the over? Because <laughs> this is the other problem I see is like we have range that goes to 112 and mage that goes to 112. Like surely they're not boosting to 125 or something, just surely totally not, breaking right? melee. Shadows but. hitting like 90. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so bad. So what? What would even? And what would happen to the saturated heart? Like there's like so many problems. I feel like. They had this with um with RS three as well. Um, the Vecna skull was the was the heart back then, and that's mm. worth nothing now because it's useless. Like it, it did the same thing; it buffed like ten mage, and then overloads come out. Peace, oh. sell it. And they just they don't care about it. They that, that's RS three. They're just like yeah, that's RS three for you. That's their like philosophy. Yeah, <laughs> just like Freaking. bulldoze and new stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Do you think there's actually like a point to that philosophy, like something like a, a silver lining with that philosophy? Like, do you think OSRs could use some of that? Uh, it allows them to be like unhinged in things they design. Like Telos gets to come out because they just don't care. They're just like sending it. <laughs> yeah, it's cool. It's cool that they're like, I don't know about experimental, but they're just like truly dedicated to like their vision. I don't think that's necessarily. A, it's probably not a good thing for old school, but it does. It does have a silver lining for sure. Okay. Do you think that we're going to see overloads, though, in the future, maybe raids uh, 4? Or is that just not really, do you think it's going to be? I mean, that's the point of meta fights. That's even what they were saying, is that that was like going to be the base component to overloads. Mm. Um, 
I know. It doesn't... It's not really... I don't know. It's not really breaking anything, I don't think. What would the stats be, though? They Are they just staying? Like, one... I don't know. They probably have to be a little lower, surely. I feel like they have to be a little... Oh, well, yeah, a little bit lower than normal Lower than, overloads. like, what they normally are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You're right. The, I mean, I so would even I be like, okay with melees going to 125... And then range and mage going to 118. There is still going to be some imbalances sure, significantly, but at least that would. The the issue is brewing places. And what is that? The big change is like next. Like next becomes much better. Yeah. I, I think it would be a great change at next. That's like the one place where overloads were like designed to be used. Mm -hmm. um, you're already brewing at like raids and stuff. And you already have overloads in those raids. So it's not like breaking raids or anything. Uh, Inferno, your limited supplies. I don't, I don't see it truly like breaking anything, but it's definitely like scary. Yeah, we'll have to see what happens. Yeah. Okay. Um, what are your thoughts on raids for rewards? Have you considered, you know, oh, man. <laughs> anything that you want? Have you thought? Are you like a creative type that like you're always thinking of like new weapons and stuff? I'm not at all. Okay. I'm really bad. I'm like. I'm always stealing things from R3. Like they should do this. <laughs> well, what would you want from our from uh from raids? 4? Well, you've got the three. You've got the three mega weapons. So now we've got to get creative. Yep. If you want a raids four weapon, uh, I don't know. Like, is it? This is this is always a cool thought in theory for me. Is like a shield, but we do play DPS scape and literally defensive bonuses make the game more boring. Yeah, yeah I so, think so it's just like such an odd thing. Now, only if like the shield had some sort of parry or some weird. I mean, obviously, that's not really parrying. That's just like kind of it's like a block, like a damage bonus when you flick it on. I don't like I don't like know. not even. I feel like, like shield flicking is really annoying. Oh, yeah, ahead. not not even flicking it on, but maybe something where you know how in the soul fight you do have to go to your equipment tab and click things. What if there was occasional blocks that you could do with this new shield there's certain bosses that you know previously designed bosses that are now going to activate this thing where if it hits you if you go to your equipment tab hit the shield on it it's just i don't fucking know it just sounds mm -hmm. overly complicated and i don't think it would ever really work but i don't know i almost want a new shield just because it kind of goes along with like we have the three styles then we also have the shield that comes from it but it's hard I don't to say because that just doesn't sound interesting. Like I feel like a lot of people would just be like against it. Like, what the hell is this? Nobody wants this. Yeah, uh, it. I could see it being like a very unique ring or something where it's like it changes the way. I was, I was with what you were saying. I was just thinking like if it was like soul attacks everywhere and you get a like slight buff when you catch things, like when you're wearing this ring or something like that. Mm. I could see that being like mega rare, like worthy. I don't know. You know what we need? We need Sonic the Hedgehog ring, where you actually start moving three <laughs> tiles every tick everywhere in the game. Actually Make the sound breaking. too. Yes, yeah. please. Perfect. Yeah. You turn into a ball. You just turn yes. into a ball. It's rolling. Yes. Charge up a spin dash and then just fly out from the pillar to get to the next pillar. Yes. Yes. Bro, that was Sonic, Sonic Adventure 2. Did you ever play that on the GameCube? Oh, a long time ago. Bro, I was like 10 or that something. That game slapped us so hard. Oh, my God. Just rolling. It just... You're just Sonic just rolling everywhere and dashing. Like that that's a those are classic games, man. Like we don't get games like that anymore. Man. It's amazing. Yeah, we'll <laughs> we'll have to see. I guess raids four. I, I still kind of lean on shield, even though I know that's not gonna be a thing. Cause it's just like, what even else? Like maybe like some uh, you know what I wanted? I wanted those uh what did I call them? Abyssal knuckles. Like a, a two tick melee weapon. Ooh, that'd so be this is cool. this is best DPS. It would it would outclass Scythe, but only if you never miss ticks. And there would be some obviously there would have to be like some sort of balancing where gear upgrades in the future are not gonna absolutely just keep exponentially increasing the strength. There'd have to be some sort of thing where it's basing strength off of what it would be for ticks, and then it's just making it two punches, kind of. So in the future, just like Blowpipe just becomes more and more and more and more extreme, the more range strength we get. Um, this would have to have some sort of limitation yeah. on it. Yeah, yeah. But ultimately, I think it would be, and I, I think it actually makes perfect sense for a two-tick weapon to be the best in a lot of positions because it's so easy to lose ticks. So I think something like just 
punching mm. shit would actually be <laughs> it would like be really funny it would just be cool i do because it would just be so much harder to not lose any ticks like especially if you're doing gear swaps like if you imagine you have these two knuckles and you're killing necks and you're punching necks it's a stab let's just say punching it you switching to your range you will lose so many ticks unless you're just like super super fast yeah that's a hard switch that's so really hard. ultimately you're still gonna be you're gonna be fine with a with a, a fang but if you really want to milk that little bit of extra DPS and you're willing to, you know, click really, really fast, these would be better. Mm. I don't know. That is something like that. I, I would love a two-tick. I'm really sad that they scrapped the uh, Hekka as well of a two-tick mage weapon. But I, yeah, know you were fast... a big, I know you were a big fan of the Shadow, right? <laughs> Coming out. Uh, I, I, the, the Hekka had so many issues and was so like, it complicated. Did. It, but they, it, they did. It could have been cool with some work for sure. They just needed to make it more simple. Like, why yeah. Why wasn't it just two tick? Like, just make a two tick and balance it somehow with the DPS. And what is up with all these spellbook weird thing? Like, I don't know. It <laughs> was weird. Yeah. Fast weapons have a lot of, like, that is definitely an area they could, like, design stuff for, for sure. Like, th that's kind of unexplored. Our best is three tick, like, fun weapons for melee, so. Yeah. Two ticking would be insane. Melee two I'm just would It would be, be funny to see someone flying around the Nyla room just punching things. <laughs> I know. <laughs> that would be cool. <laughs> it would be really sick. Yeah. And even, ooh, even imagine this. Like, imagine something where there's, like, a special attack with those knuckles or something where you actually, it, you, the special attack is that you can attack from two tiles further back. So as you're running to something, you know, you don't want to lose that extra tick. So you can actually do like a an air punch, you know, two, two <laughs> like tiles beforehand. Yeah, two <laughs> tiles beforehand. And then, you know, you just get an additional attack the very next tick as well or something. Just something wild like that. Like, I think that, I don't know, something fast. I don't, it could something be something fast, fast for sure. Yeah, I could see that. Okay. Um, Oh, okay. So this was actually basing off of what you had said. This is just a clip from Mod Kieran just talking about like the invocation system, how it didn't really nail. But Blueberry Central is saying, in the recent dev stream, Mod Kieran said that the invocation system hasn't gone as good as they had hoped, as it's been very difficult to balance. Do you think Jagex should scrap the invo system in future content? I was really worried about invos uh, before Coliseum came out. Like it just was like, if if I'm struggling to think of like unique ones, like Jagex has to be having the same thing, right? So mm -hmm. there's a lot that are just boring. Um, my myopia is like, oh, that's a great invo. I love taking that. Like it's free. It's completely free. Is it interesting? No, not really. Um, what is the most interesting like, in there? I think it's re-entry, probably the like trying yeah. not to rag the wrong tiles. It, that's also the worst one, though. So you yeah. just like never take it. <laughs> you know, know this is the most I think that is the most interesting, though. You're right. God damn it. Uh, you know what would actually yeah. be really cool about a re-entry is something where there is actually a, a um, like an ally or something that is that comes into the Coliseum for you and actually marks tiles where you get power ups. So you're purposely oh man timing these power up pool so that like okay this is a tile i want to be on so i can get power ups and so if it's allies what, like what shooting if, shooting like healing what, stuff yeah what if they put like um uh, there's a game i played heroes of hammer watch where there's a, a a similar coliseum with like a buff area in the middle and every like 40 seconds it's like there's a buff in the center and you can like run over there and get a buff <laughs> yes what if there's like a buff in the center of coliseum it's like you run oh. over there you grab a buff <laughs> bro like literally just i mean I'm, I'm even thinking of a simple osrs mechanic where it's like nightmare zone there's an overload orb in the earth. Yeah, um, you get uh, unlimited specs for five specs. Yeah. If you get over there. <laughs> Fuck it. <laughs> Dude, please. Please add that. Like, you're just running out to the middle. Do you see so many people planking? Just running out, trying to. Trying <laughs> you to have that. 15 yeah. seconds to get over there. Yeah. Better solve your pillar stake fast, man. Oh, my God. That would be amazing. Like, oh, that would be fun. You that know would what, be really fun. You know what would be actually really cool is if. I don't know. I'm just thinking what, you're right about like invocations. If they're done right, if they're unique enough, they're fun. But I think what's cool is when there's invocations that actually give you power-ups rather than power-downs or rather than limitations. 
Because and everybody's of, saying with volley is like it should damage enemies. Like that's the kind of thing. I was yes. For. Yeah, you're right. You know what would be cool as well is if re-entry damaged enemies too. So you're purposely launching sure. them on tiles where the manticore is, and boom, now it's burning because it's you, yeah you targeted it and perfectly. it eats the tile or like you get a, a like a defense drain on them if they walk over it or something like yeah that. Sure. that would be amazing and the explosion like if you were to get the yeah explosions the volatility yeah like you said like yeah, yeah. just that that's legitimately you know dealing high damage like that would be really interesting turning turning the enemy's attacks against them is really fun they they very rarely do that yep you're totally right that'd be sick Okay, Palmy asks, imagine you would uh, have went on to become an ATC. Is that air traffic control? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, are you grateful for how things turned out? Okay, so the, the story with that, I, I think I might have mentioned it, but I, I failed air traffic control training by 0.1%. I had like an unlucky <laughs> so thing bad. happen, basically. So bad. It's it's really it's really similar to like Inferno waves. So effectively, I got a bad sixty three, and then uh, <laughs> oh, no. unlucky, I died, and that's it. They they scoot you out, peace, unlucky. Yeah. Uh, I I I enjoy streaming in RuneScape. So I don't know. There, there's a different like world where I'm an air traffic controller or something. That's probably also interesting. But yeah. <laughs> I'm good with where I'm at. I'm happy. That's cool. No, it, it, and I think there's something to be said about the content creation f sphere. It's easy. I do this myself. Like, so I'm, I'm speaking for myself right here. But like, it's easy to almost limit yourself in a way. But ultimately, like content creation in general, like the world's your oyster. I mean, you can literally do whatever, like whatever yeah. you think would be super fun content and entertaining. Like, you can just do that and. Especially when you're already kind of set with, you know, a monthly revenue. Like, you're now you can be super creative. You're not having to, you know, stress out about everything. So, I think there yeah, is. Yeah, it's definitely encouraged me to, like, push myself. Not just in game, but, like, uh, just try to be, like, more entertaining and that kind of thing. For sure. So Yeah. And you're, you're a perfect example of it. I think you're, like, truly... Like, when you started live streaming consistently and stuff like that... Yeah, you you understood what it was, and you every time I pop into your stream, it's entertainment. So great I job. appreciate that. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> Keep it up. All right. Do you think this is from Dexter? Do you think with recent updates, Jagex is doing a good job at bridging the gap from casual PVM to high end PVM? Hmm. With recent content, well, okay. So most recent is Coliseum. And Moons, I guess. Well, Moons is. I don't know if that's bridging any gaps. Maybe it's a bridging a couple gaps, but maybe I, I think Moons had some from what I saw, some things that like encouraged like learning basic like things that other bosses use. So yeah. I think that is probably good. Um I think their intention with Colosseum was make the first like early waves like a thing that low levels are grinding or something, right? I don't think that's really succeeded in that. Yeah, it failed. They they didn't even make the prayer armor a thing you can get, so I don't know. I think that just kind of went out the window at some point. Which is probably okay. It's probably better to focus on making it as good as possible. But I will say it is interesting. Like, it is cool that you can cash out. Like, if you are a low level and you don't... I'm trying to imagine this because I feel like this is such a temporary thing that anybody would deal with if you're low level. Like, it just... There's no way some low level is going to be grinding Inferno to wave five repeatedly and cashing out. Like, oh, I just feel really comfortable here. Like, really? You're just not going to push to wave six eventually and just eventually yeah. complete the Coliseum? But it is kind of interesting that, especially now that you're going to be getting loot at wave three, maybe there are players that really just feel comfy just getting to wave like five and then cashing maybe. out. And they can make a, it's like a money maker potentially. And, and yeah, they're learning like a, and they're mastering if that's those like waves. a forecast level like money maker i could see it yeah. like, sounds hella boring forecast. but yeah it sounds horrible yeah. like i mean forecast is five. boring too right so yeah. i don't know it's true but yeah no i think uh i think the fact that you can cash out whenever and it doesn't feel like you just quit like it like you still get the reward chest you feel good i think that was actually kind of a cool system they implemented but you're right like the earlier when we were just talking about the rewards in general it just doesn't feel like it's very high risk high rewardy and the rewards are kind of boring no. the loot is pretty good right now um 
if you're very fast at it. But I don't think yeah. it's going to stay that way very long because the rewards are just dropping like fast. Mm. How are the splinters doing rewards wise? Are, I... Uh, and are, are those going to drop or raise? I mean, surely they're going to drop over time just with the amount of people doing Coliseum, but are they going to raise because nobody's going to be farming wave one as much anymore? Or So they're they're 940 right now. They're actually pretty high. Um, the thing is, they're weird because it's a thing that like when a main completes um, their quiver, they suddenly need 150,000 of them. So like the amount of people getting their quiver i think it's going to like start trending downward and the amount of people farming it is going to trend upward so i just i don't know i feel like they're going to fall like way down pretty soon but i don't know it could also be that more and more people are getting into it with the guides and stuff and they're just more and more people are getting quivers and also draining those out of the game so yeah it, that's true i don't know i don't know uh, you know what i want um I, w I wish there had been some transmogs to the uh the soul pet the small pet i need i need the small archer pet that hugs your east tile and yeah. runs with you i need that <laughs> <laughs> just always following i need you that forever. so bad i will say though people were saying that the soul pet was budget like toa wardens or whatever dude i'm actually a huge fan of the soul pet the because you like it i'm not a huge fan I'm i like it well the the reason is because it, it 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 fits every single like criteria that i care about which is be small don't have underglow and <laughs> that's pretty much it like just don't just don't have a, don't have a shadow and a be simple small. man i yeah. see be small <laughs> Fair enough. it's like it just reminds me of it's just classic it just looks cool i just wish it could run that'd be dope I just love yeah. running pet. Like next nextling just can't be beat sometimes because it's just it can run it's so dope. Yeah, nextling is cool. Yeah. Um they, but, they could definitely I a little manticore could be cool or like a little minotaur. I could see that. Okay, so earlier we were talking about Soul Reaper and you know Echo Boots. So I think that's when it was kind of brought up, but are are they still planning on doing something with the Soul Reaper axe? I thought that was part of Project Rebalance. Is that still coming, or is that just scrapped? It should it? still be on the table. I don't think they said anything about scrapping it. So okay, so what what's going to be happening with that next part of the Project Rebalance? Like, do you, do you have any idea what they could do with the Soul Reaper? So they axe? specifically they specifically said that they were not happy with the usability of it and not like the damage it does or anything. The damage it does actually beats Scythe in a lot of cases. It's usually if something's really high defense, it's winning. Um, like Vanguards, I think it technically is like 2% better than Scythe is. So wow. there's like a couple, it does really good damage. Wait, wait, it's wait, but it's not best in slot though, right? Or is well, it? it? Technically, it technically is best in slot, but you can't Over use Over like Fang and everything else, like at Vanguards. Uh, Fang might still beat it. I'm not sure. It's probably like tied with Fang or okay. like one of them edges out barely. That's wild. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, the damage isn't an issue. It's just like you can't use this thing. Like, is that assume? Oh, yeah. So, so that that is assuming a five stack at Vanguards. Five stack, yeah. With a five yeah. stack. And you're never stack. five stack at Vanguards. <laughs> no, you can't be. You literally can't be. <laughs> <You> literally, <yeah. laughs> that sounds so horrible. Okay. In a magical world where you did, though, it would win. Yeah. Okay. So is the stacking the problem? Is the the, the getting getting uh, chip damage the problem, or or should we just so scrap the issue, this entire thing, or what? The issue is you can't spec with it at all. You can't go, oh, I want to use a claw spec. Oh wait, yeah. They, uh, if I do that, I lose yeah. all my stacks. So dumb. You definitely need to be able to swap weapons. Like no question. Mm -hmm. Um, maybe you just store the stacks if you swap to a different weapon or something. Well, then that encourages flicking it. I don't know, man. I don't know what the play is. They got to do something to make it so like you're not losing stacks every five seconds. Yeah, it's really tough. It just feels like there's no reason to ever release the stack either. Like if they were to do what you're saying, where you just endlessly stack it, why would you ever release the stack? It's just not even not even a spec weapon at this point. Just you're just constantly at no. Five. The point the point of the spec is just to like reclaim what you've lost, and that's it. Yeah, like, it's not really doing anything. I will say the Soul Reaper Axe has some very niche uses where getting a guaranteed 40 heal in a dire moment is actually really cool. That is neat, yeah. Being able to release um, like a thing to get health instantly is cool. 
it's it's really, kind of like the overload like wearing off like yeah that's like the only two things that have that especially because you can spec and then like angler karambo on and you're just like boom like you are just <laughs> you're at fully some speed crazy end. pvp shenanigans yeah yeah it, it is really i mean because i was even thinking that you know like the duke uh awakened fight i literally brute forced my way through that fight i never actually learned like the stepping and stuff oh, okay so toward the end, I I didn't actually use the Sword Reaper Axe, but if I had been, because you could just main it there, the fact that you could just get a guaranteed 40 heal in a dire situation right at the end sounds like a really cool kind of it's thing. It's a cool idea. I know what they were trying to do. Like, you can see it. It's almost there. It's yeah. like just a little blurry. Mm -hmm. Like You're right. I don't know what they do to fix it, but... Okay. Cool on paper just doesn't really work in practice. Yeah. Do, do you think they're... So I think uh, Inquisitors was also on that list of things they want to touch. Oh, yeah, it was. Uh, I don't know. Just more crush bonus, I guess. Is that it? Do you, do you feel like it what should be... What do you be... do with ink? Ink should not be Addy armor. Like, definitely not. <laughs> I'm like... I, I'm legitimately okay with it being Addy armor, but it needs to be worth being If it's Addy really armor. strong yeah. as, as the trade-off, which it was when it came out, I think. But yeah, before Torva. No, it's not. No, yeah. yeah, Torva exists. So yeah, before Torva, it was it was actually really cool to use. And um, I think in my head, honestly, I think the best way to go about it is to just severely just jack up the accuracy. Just like seriously jack that shit up because yeah. accuracy ultimately like max hits are make so much more of a difference in most scenarios obviously if things have super high defense but there's so much defense negating weapons like spec weapons and stuff that you can just do it so i just feel like having super high accuracy just is completely warranted and justified with inquisitors and uh, yeah the big the big issue with it really is that like if you want to use a scythe your best melee weapon with the crush armor you got to put it on crush um, but then it's 30 crush bonus. So like, that's like worse than like a rune mace or something. So like maybe a ton of crush bonus. Like, Is that actually worse than a rune mace? Bit. I don't know. That's off my head. It's it might probably, be. I'm not sure. It's think, really bad. I think you're right. <laughs> that's funny. Yeah. So it's like only, you're only crushing with a scythe at like tecton and that's it. Yeah. Huh. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see what they do. I'm kind of just excited to see what their uh, vision is for it. But And then they were doing something. Do you know what they're doing with the whole agility changes and like run energy changes? Are those are those going to be oh, significant were... for for like I can see exactly what they were doing with run energy exactly. Um did they say? I don't I know if they did. I almost want to say part of it was that the higher agility level you have heavy armor does not so if you're let's just say you're wearing 30 kilograms right now mm -hmm. at, even at 99 agility that's still going to affect you the same as it would at one agility uh, obviously like you're still going to be you running longer but i think it's like almost like you're getting like this threshold increase so 30 now acts as zero or something like that or like i think the i think the weight system has become really stupid <laughs> <laughs> yeah i think they, it's just literally up to like the whim of whoever made whatever item. That's not really a thing they think about. Oh, but Troy weighs as much as Torva. Like why? So dumb. Uh, so you're like at the weight cap always in like raids. Yeah. So it's like not even a. Well, that's what thing that's you why. Think about. And this could just be in my head. For some reason, I'm thinking this was the thing. Like if they just increase the threshold per level. So at 99, let's just say 50 kilograms or whatever the weight would be. We can decide that is now mm -hmm. the zero, the new zero, because you are 99 agility. So everything from zero I'm to totally 50 is that. now just counting as you being zero kilograms. Yeah. Right? And then it, going any just, higher than that. It's not a thing you even think about, like the weight, and it's not adding anything to the game even. You're never like, ooh, I could take a lighter weight ranged armor here, and actually I would get more run energy, I think. Yeah, it's that's not... true. Very few <laughs> and... No one in the game has ever done that, so... And now they're adding a bunch of like pools and other things to just make it like super easy. So you just don't even deal with run energy. Yeah. And we've had weight is four definitely leagues. like a thing from way back that they have just like yeah. kept. That. But do you think there's any like is it okay to just bulldoze? Uh, you know that term from RS3, just bulldoze like stamina's and just make it so like you're just running a lot everywhere. Like stams are pretty much a thing of the past. Um, I think control walking as minor as it is, does add a lot. It's interesting at some places. 
the, the places you use it are like Inferno walking back to the start tile after uh -huh. a wave. You can try to time it and get some run energy back. And then like Ulm Shadow Running. Um, you can like like walk on purpose like most of the way. Um, what if they were to big... do something where like walking now actually just just increases your HP regen? So I, yeah, I, I, I'm uh... just I'm, I'm 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 imagining a world where basically you can just run unlimited once you're 99 agility. Like you're just never gonna need to bring stamps in any real situation besides if you're just running across all of Gilinor for some reason. So I'm imagining something where you're just regening your run so fast everywhere. Even in PVM situations, where now walking mm -hmm. just increases your HP, like it's like a rapid heal. Basically, it's like a rapid, rapid heal to walk. That uh, dude, I don't know why. I just yeah. think that's actually kind of a cool idea because then walking is still useful in the places where you could use it in a PVM thing to regen a fraction of HP here and there. And it's just, you know, <laughs> like I don't know. I think that's actually kind of a cool. That's about as that's about as useful as it is right now, too. Yeah, so. yeah. I yeah. Think, uh, just just the fact that in there, if there are certain situations, most situations, there's going to be no reason to be walking. But Inferno, like you said, there, you walking is not slowing you down at all. Yeah, I don't know. Is being forced to walk. Like but you're not for, game, but but you're know. not forced to walk because it's literally just a it's like putting on rapid heal like who the hell is putting on rapid heal well, obviously rapid right heal. I'm saying like without changing it is it is there some oh, value okay. in it is yeah, where yeah. I'm like trying to look at I don't know well I I'm just going based off of what you said where you said like it it, mm -hmm. it almost does add some sort of like extra element to to control walk here and there so it just yeah only uh, keep that so I think they could do that or something like that some tiny benefit sure yeah interesting. Do you think that's the what what what's going to be happening though? Like eventually, we're just going to be running everywhere anyway, and stamps are a thing of the past. <laughs> I'd, well, I'd that's what happened that. in Ars three. Um, the the fact we have teleports like everywhere too, just is kind of it, it's made it a different game for sure. You're not running back from like the boat to Barra's anymore. Isn't there like some sort of dashing in Ars three? Just dash everywhere. There is. You can surge. It's on like a 15 second cool. Well, there's a bunch of things that buff it, but so so, so what is that? Is that would that be cool at all in OSRS? I'm. I have I've no been idea. I've been wanting like a smoke bomb consumable item that does that. That's like a a dash forward. How f it's how like far not, would it dash you? Eh, I don't know, like five tiles, something like that. Okay. Just in one tick, just boom. Just sure. I, you could do like a backwards dash or like um, I don't know, something like that. I don't know where exactly you'd use that. I'm sure it would have uses. Inferno. It would be fun. You're just like something, <laughs> yeah, something really but far away. To to waste a slot for it is like yeah. Y it would be rare that you would want that, but like surely there'd be cases. <laughs> yeah, I was I'd use one at the beginning of Tecton. I have a free slot. I just dash up to him. That would yeah, be yeah, fun. Yeah. There's some there's some cool things you could do. Surely. Interesting. What what does it even need to be an item? Like I'm just thinking like your run energy orb becomes a surge. Or I. Something. I had a, a chatter, I can't remember who it was, suggest the rapier have that as a special attack where you dash forward. That oh, would be cool. Sh that would be kind of cool. It would kind of match like a like a like a thrusting like type weapon that like dashes forward slightly. That would yeah, be yeah. cool. Okay. Um getting toward the end, I want to ask you about uh combat achievements and what do you think the Colosseum achievements will be? And do you think they should be very difficult. It feels like most CAs that have come out lately, besides raids ones, are usually quite simple. You just get them done. I uh, I was asked this on stream, and my response was, I think they should just stop adding combat achievements. <laughs> I, dude, I have literally held that sentiment. since I, I hate it, the fact that you have to upkeep these things endlessly, but I understand why they do it. But... It's not even the upkeep for me. It's more so the, what is this adding? I, I don't... Think of all the Desert Treasure 2 CAs. What what one was like fun to go for and interesting and like <laughs> difficult and, and made you go wow that was that was something I did yeah you're, you're actually totally right because the, <laughs> the old yeah no it's it's actually kind of ridiculous because it's not it's, even yeah that's actually really every funny. boss has to have the five perfect kills every boss has to have a speed run every <laughs> yeah. boss has to have some weird little jank thing where you kill it with a salamander and then you're good. <laughs> Uh, so true. I don't even I don't even think about it that way. But that, I think when it first came out, it hit because it's like, oh, I get to go and do all these weird, unique things. But yeah, at this point, it's like everything's just kind of, damn, this is just tedious for, I'm not learning anything. I don't have to ever do this again. <laughs> like, this is just, yeah, weird. 
There's CAs that are fun, but there is not that many. It is not. I'd say under ten are like, yeah, you know what? That was that was fun. That that felt right to go for. Man, I will say for Coliseum, it could be cool because there could be an invocation where it's like finish the Coliseum with Doom three on. You know, something where it really is challenging you, where most people probably wouldn't have chosen that by the end. Yeah, um, I feel like they're already thinking that with Doom three for sure. Yeah. And I feel like Coliseum could have some good ones. And then obviously the speed running actually does make you better. Like the, the simple fact that there are some speed run now the DT2 bosses are egregious examples. That's not the way. But Inferno, for example, when it first was out, it was like 65 minutes, which is piss easy for most people if you have max gear. But mm -hmm. for me, my previous best was like 78 minutes or something. I just never cared. And that did have to push yeah. me a little bit. And so a Coliseum run that's like 22 minutes or something, that's going to be brutal. Not that brutal, but I don't. I just want to take my time and chill for the most part. But um, you know, something I don't know what it would be—twenty minutes or whatever. But you know, there yeah. there are some ones that really do push you. They make you better. Yeah, I don't know. I'm I'm not super creative. Um, I'm I don't know. I'm not having an easy time coming up with good ones. I think if they're gonna add CAs, mm -hmm. um, and maybe in general, just to add a smaller amount, like. You're right. Coliseum, if it has two or three, I'm okay with that. If it has 20, how, how are you going to make 20 good Coliseum CAs? You're yeah. not going to. They're just not all going to be good. How many you can't? Out? Let me just look at this thing. Oh, Desert Treasure 2 has to be 40. <laughs> it's got to uh, be. Uh, let me just look at bosses. <sighs> well, the ones that really bothered me personally were just... I just always hate raid ones. I just... I'm just so bothered by like having to the do raid CAs. Yeah, where, yeah. Where's the where's the tombs of a basket? Tombs, of, yeah. Tombs oh, of a basket had 46. No, sorry. 46. Sorry, 51. <laughs> 51. 51. <laughs> like what is like that's just exhaust. I didn't even complete those for like a full year. I was just like, God damn. Like this is just so. What obnoxious. if Toa had five? Like, would that be a problem? I'd be okay with that. Yeah, five. Toa could have ten. Just there. Sure. Ten. There you go. Yeah. You're there, totally ten. right. Do yeah. it. 51 jesus christ <laughs> yeah okay well i think cas are cas are winning when it's like it encourages you to do something i think the like no prayer fight caves is like a really good one that's like a you do it in a weird way but it's something you still have to like learn and there's like prep into it and you're right planning and that kind of thing like it encourages you to do something difficult and interesting and you're like at the end of it you're like whoo okay i did it yeah you know? you're right it, it does teach you something but uh, when when the CAs do Leviathan five times perfectly, it's like, yeah, yeah. just I did it. <laughs> <laughs> you don't feel good after you're like, all right, thank God that's done. So I guess uh, to wrap things up, um, what is your plan? So you're streaming on Kick, um, <laughs> and uh, doing a lot of. It's I I haven't seen you. Oh, well, I've seen you upload a bunch of like a, a bunch of like the. Uh, I guess the Coliseum runs and other things. Is there anything in your mind for like other unique YouTube ideas, series or anything? Or are you pretty much just sticking to what you have been doing, which is uh, just a lot of educational yeah, stuff? Nothing, nothing crazy planned. Um, I'm, I don't know when this is going to come out, but I want to work on like a pillar stack guide for Coliseum as well for those like crazy Z stacks that, that people would be don't know really how to deal helpful. with. They're not, they're not that bad. They're definitely doable. Um, in terms of like streaming content, I'm I don't know. I'm gonna start. I'm like still speedrunning Coliseum. That'll get added. Um, and I've started doing things like solo next a little bit more. Um, I want to do fight cave speedruns pretty soon, and then like regular chambers. I haven't done either of those, so mm -hmm. I want to start throwing those in at some point. Um, cool, cool. Um, yeah. All right, no monkey. Uh, I'm gonna ask you just for a few shout outs if you have any. Uh, before we wrap things up but uh thank you guys for all listening down in the description we are gonna have no monkeys links so be sure to follow him on all of his socials no monkey do you have any shout outs <laughs> we always got a shout out cardiac of course every time must shout out cardiac <laughs> um shout out sax of course shout out sax uh He's destroying the game, and uh, he put up a really funny echo boots video that I really like so <laughs> um uh, shout out Asa as well. Like that's a disgusting time, GZ man. That's huge. No monkey. Thank you very much for your time today. I appreciate it. Thank you. I had a good time. All right, guys. We'll catch you in the next one. Peace.